Good evening, everyone. Kites Education in Associate with You are Incubated. Welcome to the International Webinar Day 2 on Fostering Innovation and Entrepreneurship in School Education to Achieve Sustainable Development Goal. According to Indian tradition, we welcome you in such a way that first we should lighten a lamp. So I request all our speakers and Dr. Manish Kaur, project director of Kites, to turn on your camera so that we can have virtual lamp lightning ceremony. I request all the speakers and Mr. Manish Kaur to please make your cameras on. Indian tradition with the Indian lamp lightning ceremony, I good evening call welcome you all on the today's conference, researching K-12 education by exhaling a grassroots movement, collection of stakeholders of education to foster a student sound, ambitious, inspiring innovation driven by knowledge, technology, entrepreneurship and sportsmanship. We have desire to metamorphosis current educational institute in a puristic center of excellence. We make everyday count in each children's life by facilitating more creative opportunity oriented environment, which is important for 21st century and economy. The purpose of KITE is to assist children in realizing their true potential, passion and purpose in life. KITE's will aid students in their holistic development and be master of kites, knowledge, innovation, technology, entrepreneurship, and sportsmanship. For this, we will act as an instrument to provide the children centric, passionate skills based and hands-on practice learning. We find unique talent in every child by establishing equality in education. We create visionary, leadership at every level with an ambitious and impactful education system. This is globally effective. The integration and blend of five pillars of growth in the kites can aid the student and teacher to grow above the gathering by preparing, for, uh, by preparing them for all the 21st century skills necessary for the new world of work. As we all know, nowadays entrepreneurship is increasing day by day in such a big level that we all needed to learn it from the very basic. With this, now I invite our first speaker for the day, today's conference with the request to come on and share their views. Dr. Rania, Global Educator, STEAM Instructor, Greek Ministry of Education and Religious Affairs, Director of Educational Technology and Innovation, Greece, for the topic, the importance of entrepreneurship in school, Curriculum. Over to you, ma'am. Uh, greetings from Greece. I'm very, very honored to participate in this own reaching and uh, resourceful uh, conference. Um, today, we'll try to clarify some uh, tenets of uh, entrepreneurship in education, uh, focusing on what it is, why it is relevant to society, and uh, when it should be applied, and how we can do this in practice. Uh, I want to suggest some of the strategies. So, may I uh, share my presentation? Yes, ma'am, you can share. Uh, is it visible now? Yes, ma'am, your screen is visible. So, 
Education is the driving force uh, behind every town of this economy, directly or indirectly. And so far, many schools have adapted to modernization and have started making uh, students work in groups to solve problems, learn online, integrate science with art. But uh, we can notice that even when students are not, uh, uh, that are graduating, they still lack advanced uh, skills and innovative thinking to work through the modern way they challenges in the workplace. So they are not graduating as makers and cutting edge thinkers the world needs. Uh, so entrepreneurship has the capacity not only to start companies, but also to think uh, creatively. It's very important to be included in school curriculum. The idea of infusing entrepreneurship in education has uh, uh, incited much enthusiasm in the last few decades. The global community of entrepreneurial education proponents are enthusiastic about the possibility of spreading the idea of entrepreneurship as it is believed to benefit the societies and the economies, in addition to influencing human development on an individual level. Many effects uh, have been stated to result from this, such as economic uh, growth, uh, job uh, creation, and increased societal resilience, but also individual uh, school, uh, uh, increased school engagement and improved equality. Um, entrepreneurship education cultivates innovative talents, which are an important driving force for future development and present innovation driven development strategies place new demands on entrepreneurship education. Uh, however, putting uh, this idea into practice has posed significant challenges uh, alongside the positive effects, lack of time and resources, teachers fear of commercialism, impeding educational structures, assessment difficulties, and lack of definitional clarity are some of these uh, challenges uh, that uh, uh, teachers have encountered when trying to infuse entrepreneurship into education. What is the definition? Uh, is, uh, an, uh, the entrepreneurship is the, uh, the ability to turn ideas into action, to be innovative, to take initiatives, take risks, plan and manage projects with a view to achieving objectives. In the educational domain, uh, we have to, this a confusion between two terms, enterprise and entrepreneurial education. Uh, the first one is considered to be more uh, narrow. Uh, it's actually um, uh, when we talk about opportunity identification, business development, self-employment, venture creation and growth, such as becoming a entrepreneur. And we have uh, the more uh, wide, the wider definition of entrepreneurship, which includes personal development, creativity, self-reliance, initiative thinking, uh, action orientation, uh, etc. Uh, so, um, why innovation is linked to entrepreneurship? Because innovation is seen as an internal driver. Innovation relates to an entrepreneurial mindset. Uh, therefore, development of new product or entrance to new markets is the result of entrepreneurship. And uh, education is an important way to acquire resources to enhance innovative uh, ability, innovate, innovative personality, be multi-level learning channels for entrepreneurs by integrating various knowledge and value systems. From knowledge learning to skills improvement, entrepreneurship education uh, includes general ability development and improvement of professional ability. So uh, what about competencies? Uh, entrepreneurial competency is uh, the ability to identify opportunities and develop the necessary resources and capital in addition to technical finance and legal knowledge related with positive creative skills that can be applied in practices, education, environment, supporting innovation. Student entrepreneurs use multi-party interaction, uh, interaction to achieve knowledge in the learning network. The innovation process is the result of interaction some of the environment the organization entrepreneurs. And uh, this uh, ability involves uh, adaptive behaviors and strategies to influence other sections in uh, context, thereby driving innovation uh, and bringing high returns. Um, when uh, were, uh, some experts were uh, decision makers were asked what are uh, the main entrepreneurial abilities, uh, they uh, replied to this creativity, uh, um, responsibility, risk taking, problem solving, team working, and entrepreneurial know how. So, what is now uh, what is important? Entrepreneurial education, entrepreneurship focuses on developing real world skills, world, uh, world challenges that uh, uh, that children will face later in their life. 
So we need the real world problems, authentic real life problems that will help students to lead exceptional lives in a rapidly changing world, learn to understand uh, the product uh, development cycle, they come up with their own unique business uh, models and deliver presentations. Uh, so uh, they can take action by addressing societal challenges and everyday problems based on their own interests and ideas. And this uh, um, stimulates creativity, engagement, the self-efficacy, but also uncertainty and ambiguity, which can be here a negative experience initially. Uh, in this way, students can be turned into teachers, telling their, uh, their students about what they have learned through the process, and of course, at the same time, uh, foster their leadership skills. Um, so uh, this way, they uh, develop crucial life skills, such as collaborate uh, and work with a team, how to, um, uh, to develop what we call public speaking uh, through presentations, how to analyze and collect data, how to use social media, to solve real life problems, as we said before, and uh, find innovative approaches. And remember that education does not uh, just benefit those who enter the fields of science, technology, and business. At the same time, students of art, of music, and humanities can develop their imaginations and learn how to apply creative thinking skills to real world problems because uh, these days, nowadays, um, uh, business emphasizes the value of arts alongside the technical skills. So we need to adopt a holistic approach. Uh, and very, very important is that here the, tent, the, the international trend here, here in Europe also is that uh, we need to start uh, at an early age entrepreneurship uh, education uh, with abilities such as problem solving, team working, uh, creativity, not necessary. Uh, not necessarily business competencies, competencies especially uh, the first uh, in primary education. Uh, so what are the benefits of course prepare students for uh, the future? Um, uh, foster the creativity and collaboration uh, because uh, we live uh, in a very unprecedented uh, uh, world and we have a uh, uh, full of, uh, uh, we're full of problems, complex uh, global social environmental issues. Um, we need students learn, first of all, before solving a problem, we need to identify problems. Uh, so uh, uh, we need to focus on this. Um, and uh, uh, after this, problem solving is uh, the next step. Um, and uh, why uh, very, very important, uh, uh, how to encourage girls and women um, because uh, uh, women, we all know that, that they are all underrepresented in leadership position, and this has created a gender gap that exists in almost every industry. And this happens also to STEM, STEM education. Uh, I'm saying that because I'm a STEM instructor and I'm trying to um, uh, support all these initiatives so that encourage girls into STEM education. And the entrepreneurship education lets kids develop their leadership skills, embrace uh, their uh, competitive side. Uh, they learn to take more risks. Uh, according to research, uh, women are more likely than men to take risks. And uh, entrepreneurship education helps students from all uh, socioeconomic backgrounds to pick out of the box and nurture unconventional talents and skills, create opportunities, ensure uh, social justice, uh, confidence, stimulates social economy. And of course, this is a lifelong process starting uh, at uh, uh, primary education, progressing all levels of education, including adult education. Um, so this, uh, uh, this way we can develop uh, initiative uh, of young, uh, young people who uh, help them to be more creative and self-confident. Uh, many times they ask if entrepreneurs are made or uh, born, uh, um, uh, of course, uh, we all know that we can teach entrepreneurship, and this is a social interaction process. Um, and uh, this uh, entrepreneurship education may uh, change our students' attitudes towards entrepreneurship. At the same time, uh, entrepreneurship education provides students and entrepreneurs with information, knowledge, and other resources they need, uh, forming a strong atmosphere of innovation, the pernicious, reducing environmental uncertainty, creating good environment for innovation development. So uh, provides a comprehensive learning management for student entrepreneurs. Here we can see uh, on different levels, uh, what are the benefits, individual, organization, societal uh, level. Um, and now we talk about how, uh, first of all, students can uh, uh, practice 
interview questions, uh, conduct interviews with entrepreneurs. Uh, they can use art because uh, when they come up with different ideas, they can also uh, try to think how they will present their ideas in aesthetic view, so art is very necessary. Thinking skills, teach uh, students uh, to think on what is positive or strong about their work, uh, so uh, develop critical thinking. Uh, imagination, creativity goes along with imagination, innovation, and research skills. Uh, because uh, uh, students uh, should uh, make their research before they decide what they want to, uh, uh, how they want to develop their product, what will be the product and how they want to develop it. Uh, so uh, we need, uh, uh, what are the strategies? Let students construct entrepreneurial stories in their own life. Uh, that will help them develop their uh, opportunity skills. Uh, let them imagine themselves as entrepreneur individuals in the distant future. Uh, let them work in discipline terms and uh, let them reflect upon problems and needs of their society because the product that we create will be based on a uh, special need in their community on their society. So what could be the activities uh, that could trigger entrepreneurial competencies? Um, Teachers can give them, uh, they give students assignments to create uh, value, uh, preferably innovative, to external stakeholders based on problems, opportunities students identify. And uh, um, this could trigger, trigger uh, uh, creativity, as I said before. Service learning is very, very important. Teachers interested in working with entrepreneurial education could probably learn much from service learning initiatives because components of successful service learning problems, a common uh, challenge is how to create an activity that truly matches the needs of the community with the learning needs of the student. Design thinking is also very important um, uh, and um, organize interaction with the uh, uh, outside world. Um, for instance, uh, in schools, uh, in my school, uh, we had uh, organized uh, a bazaar where uh, a children created some models of the asset of water technology, and uh, they created uh, a, a small company about this. They sell all the products, and we sent uh, all uh, the income of the money to students in Africa where uh, they implement my national product about water. Uh, so I think that uh, the partnership has many, many pedagogical applications. And how we can uh, assess uh, all this? Uh, for instance, we can have student diaries, novel ways to assess uh, the partnership, student observation, emotional critical event. Why emotion? Because uh, according to recent research, uh, affection, emotions are key to attributing meaning to our learning experiences. And uh, we can see we're talking about holistic approach uh, that uh, the preneurs and students are not robots. We need also to uh, focus on the human dimension, the human aspect and the emotional aspect. Uh, here in Europe, we have uh, this started um, the commission 26. Uh, and this, uh, um, uh, and this uh, commission actually is, uh, insta is inspired by um, uh, all, the, uh, all this uh, 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 effort of the European Union to focus on learning about the apprenticeship from primary education to the university. And what are uh, the recommendations? Uh, they uh, suggest a coherent framework, uh, support for schools so they try to foster the apprenticeship in higher education because the apprenticeship should be incorporated in various subjects. Uh, the participation by external actors and businesses, support, of course, for teachers should be given a uh, teacher's initial and uh, in-service uh, training, as well as practical experiences. Um, and the practical experience, why? Because one of the most effective ways to promote the entrepreneurial mindset and skills is through learning by doing. Um, and we have also some examples in, in Europe, imagine a competition, the Boss Festival in Spain, uh, we have uh, um, another problem education change system, uh, uh, very, very interesting uh, project. And here in Greece uh, recently, uh, <clears throat> uh, students have created an, uh, an enterprise uh, for students with visual impairment. And at the same time, they uh, use the STEM education. I think it's the idea uh, how to create project uh, combining entrepreneurship and uh, STEM education using Arduino. Here, this project we have sensors, etc. So uh, this way, the, uh, through entrepreneurship, we can make the world better and solve problems, uh, meet needs. 
And um, uh, because students this way, they're hardwired to make a difference and make the world a better place. And despite its uh, promising effects, uh, we need to keep in mind that this is at a quite early uh, stage of development. Uh, it is still uh, uh, a marginal pedagogical approach, but uh, in the future, we can hope for greater awareness of the need to develop and establish progressive model, new models for entrepreneurial uh, education. Uh, we can also hope for, for researchers to identify some unifying characteristics of entrepreneurial education across all levels of education uh, to a higher degree. And uh, in the future, teachers will hopefully have access to classification frameworks and other support material, allowing them to pick and choose from a wide variety of pedagogical tools. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Do you have any uh, questions? I am at your disposal. Thank you, ma'am, for such an insightful session. Anybody having any question can raise their hand or they can just pop their message in the chat box. We are having a person with the name uh, Sanatan. He has raised his hand. Am I audible? Yes, you are audible. Uh, thank you, ma'am. I would like to ask some questions. Raina, thank you, ma'am. How are you, ma'am? Hello. How are you? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Mm -hmm. Welcome to India. Uh, I would like to ask the host thing. Can I ask now? Yes. Uh, does entrepreneurship education aid students from all socioeconomic backgrounds to think outside the box and nature on conventional talents and skills? I didn't hear you well. Can you uh, repeat the question? Because I, I didn't hear uh, the question. You are repeating, madam. Uh, you can, uh, moderator, can repeat the question? Okay, okay ma'am. That entrepreneurship education aims mm -hmm. students from all socioeconomic backgrounds to think outside the box and nature uh, and conventional talents and skills. Yes, what we think that uh, uh, actually entrepreneurship to create out of the box thinkers, empower them to become uh, innovators and creators. And uh, this is what I'm trying, I'm trying as a STEM instructor is to combine this with STEM education. I think it's the ideal. And I'm very happy because here in Greece, so for the first time in our curriculum, uh, the minister announced uh, a new discipline, uh, you know, at all levels of education, which is called labs of innovation and uh, lab skills, which includes life skills. And uh, there, there is not only robotic system, but also entrepreneurship. That means that our uh, politicians uh, take into consideration all these uh, recommendations made by European Union and other policymakers. And they try, they, we have a start, they try to integrate this in our curriculum. I'm very happy about this. Um, so all uh, teachers from here in Greece, we have the opportunity to experiment with this. And very, very important is outdoor activities. It's uh, very, very important because teachers as uh, students will have the opportunity to learn uh, through natural, uh, uh, through um, activities near the, uh, the nature. So they can learn how to respect the environment, etc. So all that we can see all this holistic approach, environmental education, entrepreneurship, STEM education, technology, all that they can be combined in one, in only one project. This is the magic of interdisciplinarity and of STEM education in only one problem. So we can talk actually about innovation. For the first time, we can talk about innovation out of the box thinking. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Thank, thank you, you. ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank, nice. thank you so much, ma'am, for answering. Uh, actually, I was going through the chat box and all was saying that the session was really informative and wonderful. Thank you so much, ma'am. We will keep inviting you in event and we will uh, learn from you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you very much. Now I invite a keynote speaker, Professor Dr. Ruben. Director of Foreign Language Center at University of Pirana at the Les Americas, University in Lima, District Bureau. 
chairman and ceo of speaker up as relative leadership bureau to please take the motion and introduce a delegate with the topic entrepreneurship mindset for personal development over to you sir hello everyone this is a very interesting topic we are discussing greetings from lima peru in south america wow it's very interesting the thing that we need to to have in mind let me share my screen so you can appreciate the things that i carefully prepared for today the first thing is very interesting what we have entrepreneurship in personal development wow look at that so what we have to keep in mind is an entrepreneurial mindset. Wow, what a huge word, mindset. So what we need to have in mind is what we mean by this. And we can say that the entrepreneurial mindset is a specific set of beliefs, knowledge, and thought processes that drives entrepreneurial behavior. Those with an entrepreneurial mindset tend to have a humanistic outlook, being other focused and understanding that one creates value by looking to solve problems for others. Wow, this is very powerful. Looking to solve problems uh, for others. So this is part of community. This is part of living together to be part of a society. So isn't that interesting? Very good. I can see your faces from the ones who have their cameras on, but I don't see the reactions. You can have your cameras off, but you also have a panel of reactions. You have a thumb up, you have a heart, and you have whatever you want. So you can participate with me because it is part of entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship is to globalize the participation in having an entrepreneurial mindset, is to be independent also right very good so if we continue talking about this we can also have this entrepreneurial mindset look at that look at the brain and look at the the rocket so, so the brain in the rocket the brain is marvelous and it can fly your brain you can fly with your ideas with your thoughts so this is what we, it is all about in entrepreneurial mindset. And we need to have to cultivate what? So we need to, in the entrepreneurial mindset, we have five characteristics to cultivate. What do we need to cultivate? I'm going to show you the five characteristics and you tell me by, through your reactions if you really agree with this or not. If you agree with this, you can have a thumbs up in your reactions. If not, it's okay. Not a problem because this is part of this discussion in this. So I can tell you that we need to cultivate a positive mental attitude. Why is a positive attitude important for entrepreneurs? Why? Why do you think? Because entrepreneurship means also to face difficult things, difficult situations and you need to be positive because if you are not you are going to be surrounded in worriness to be surrounded in sadness and you are going to be stressed out which is not possible for entrepreneurship so then what we need is a creative mindset creative we all brains our all, our brains are already creative so we need to let set it free to have a very nice creative activities so persuasive communication ability also it's important that we need to cultivate intrinsic motivation and drive and tenacity 
and an ability to learn from failure. So what do you think? I really enjoy this. Tenacity and ability to learn from failure. Huh? Is that correct? Very interesting, powerful words that we all have in mind. Also, the entrepreneurship mindset with these aspects that we need to cultivate helped us to be in a very good position through this lockdown. The lockdown that we have just experience and we are and we continue to experience due to COVID-19, isn't it? So what we also need is an entrepreneurial mindset. We need to have this entrepreneurial leadership. Wow, just talking about leadership, we need to anticipate, think strate strategically, initiate change. What we need, we also need opportunity recognition, the capacity to imagine dramatically new ideas and ways. We also need continued of entrepreneurial activity, people-centric strategy focus systems, and entrepreneurial culture, future-based orientation that empowers people. So we also have in here three essential mindsets an entrepreneurial need, an entrepreneur needs to success. Do you wanna know, do you want to know what the three essential mindsets an entrepreneur needs to succeed? So which are they? Let me share with you the first. The, this is the right direction mindset. This is the right direction mindset. The right direction mindset is necessary when decisions have to be made with time constraints. The no doesn't mean no, it just means not now mindset. You see, not now. The I was wrong mindset. The I was wrong mindset, yes. So it's the capacity for you to see that the things that you are doing are not proper, are not proper in this situation. So you need to say, okay, I was wrong, or I am wrong now, but I can be better. So this is something that we need to face all the time. And we have, we also have 12 business goals every entrepreneur wants to achieve. So we need to show, we need to teach which they are. The first one is sketching an apt business plan. Well, because entrepreneurship is, deals with business or not. Sure. And hiring and retaining a skilled workforce. This is important, the workforce. Financial stability. This is what we need to learn. If we learn this from very early education, it's going to be great because you are not going to face debts while you are an adult. Because lacking this kind of instruction, people like to be from debt to debt, which is not good. And aligning marketing and sales. Something else that we need is generating greater role. It means the incomes, online positioning, growth, growth and growth, always. This is important to get better in growth, our enterprises. Becoming more efficient in all sectors. More efficient in all sectors. Nothing is enough. We are always getting better. I think we continue with the 12 characteristics of successful entrepreneurs is, they take what they do seriously. The entrepreneurs, take what they do seriously. What else do we have? They make it all about the customer. Yes, because they, are, they deal with the interpersonal skills. They're not afraid of risks. No, just 
to be risky is good. We need to take the risk in most of the times. They aren't scared. Entrepreneurs aren't scared of the road less traveled. It means that we need to explore. And they harness technology. It means that they adopt technology whenever it is necessary. They invest in themselves. They are constantly learning. Wow, lifelong learning. I consider myself a lifelong learning because every time I'm learning, I'm learning today a lot from our dear presenter, Rana. Well, I have learned a lot today as well. They make the big decisions carefully. Interesting set, interesting point of view. We need the ability to think outside the box. What is the ability to think outside the box? And improvise when necessary. Mm -hmm. Improvise when necessary is an essential element of the entrepreneurial mindset. Entrepreneurs can see how something is done and imagine how it can be done better. An entrepreneur, an entrepreneur is an individual who creates a new business. Look at that definition, look at that meaning of an entrepreneur, who is an individual who creates a new business bearing, bearing most of the risks and enjoying most of the rewards. The process of setting up a business is known as entrepreneurship. The entrepreneur is commonly seen as an innovator, a source of new ideas, goods, services, and business or procedures. Then, let me tell you about the six skills all entrepreneurs need. And we have the basic finance skills. Finance skills such as budgeting and financial statement analysis are necessary for running a business. Don't you think so? Networking, sure. I said at the beginning that we are part of a community. We live in a society. So your network is one of your greatest assets. Speaking confidently, yes, you need to speak confidently. You need to know what you are offering. Your entrepreneur, your enterprise is about a service, is about something tangible, is selling things. So you need to be confident about what you deal with. Accepting and acting on feedback. Sure, we need to accept why you get, get worried when you receive feedback. Actually, we need to have the idea of the feedback very clear. Feedback against critic. Feedback, it's also always positive that people have to highlight the things that you have done very well. I have to give you suggestions of how you can improve, but not telling you, I didn't like what you did. Don't telling you that was wrong. That is critic and that is negative. That's not possible. So we need to get feedback and to give it back as entrepreneurs. This is something that we need to teach since the very early education. Recognizing patterns, also it's important. Then let me continue with the seven effective ways to build entrepreneurial skills. Seven effective ways. You have to attend events like we are today. We are in a great event and we are all attending this event. So congratulations, you are using one of these seven ways, seven ways to build entrepreneurial skills. Learn from the experts. Yes, I am consider myself an expert in this because I am involved in this. I mean, I'm learning from you because all of you are experts in what you do. Great, we are learning together. We are applying these ways. And don't give up. Wow, yes, continue. Why are you going to give up? Because you're alive. Since you're alive, you need to continue. You need to continue going with the path of success. Sure, you are going to find obstacles, but you need to surpass them. Volunteer to lead. Yes, always volunteering is, is a great, but to lead, to lead, to show people you are there for them. 
Learn from a mentor. Yeah, we need to learn. Always learning. Keep learning. Enhance communication in skills. That is what we need to enhance. It needs to promote communication skills. It's very important to have communication skills. And we need mentoring for this. And creativity, which leads to success by creating a new ideas for competitive advantage. The whole process of entrepreneurship is rooted in creation and exploration of new ideas. When an entrepreneur is able to generate a new idea that is feasible as well as efficient, it gives him an edge over the competition. This is important, competitive advantage. This is great. In entrepreneurial behavior, entrepreneurial behavior, wow, sounds very nice, which is that entrepreneurial behavior underlies the inclination to undertake invention and innovation. Invention and innovation, huge words including the creation of something new, as well as the distribution and adoption to the new throughout society. It is the behavior most likely exhibited by entrepreneurship. So what are the five SMART goals? What are they? The SMART acronym outlines a strategy for reaching any objectives. SMART goals are, remember this, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and core within a time phrase, a time frame. Good. So again, again, and please repeat with me. Repeat with me, please, because this is very important. Don't you want to be smart? So applied, this is smart. S stands for specific. M stands for measurable. A stands for achievable. R stands for realistic. And T stands for time frame. Wow, this is really, really great. Apply. This is going to be great. And you have to spread this idea. You have to spread this smart technique for everyone to build this entrepreneurship mindset because it's going to help people for the personal growth. This is all related since we are human beings. The entrepreneurial mindset, this is all about we need, we we have to learn that through all the things that we have seen, we have previously seen that I have previously shown to you, is that one of the things is to become financial independent. You don't have to depend on the government for a good financial care. No, you build your own financial, financial betterment. And that is important, but you need a culture. You need financial culture and financial intelligence. <laughs> we are talking about emotional intelligence, spiritual intelligence, but who talks about financial intelligence? You can become a millionaire if you have financial intelligence. Have you read the biography of the millionaire people? Yes, read them. I invite you to read them. There is a nice book. It's that about uh, rich people that was, was written a long time ago. Yes, it's the rich growth, no? Rich, grow, grow rich. Yes, grow rich. Eh? But yes, and, and there is a very interesting, uh, Napoleon Hill is the author. Have you heard about Napoleon, Napoleon Hill? Okay, I invite you to search for that name. Napoleon Hill and Grow Rich. Think and Grow Rich. That's the book. Yeah, interesting book. Huh? I really recommend that. So what we all need is all the schedules. We as independent through this entrepreneurial mindset, we have all the schedules. We have financial freedom. 
we find the, the right idea and we own a lifestyle. We own a lifestyle, the lifestyle that you really deserve. You really deserve. And you need to be happy to be always positive all the time. That's the way it is. Then if we attach this through the personal development, we are going to have good health from the emotional, mental, physical, spiritual, and social. This is all about the entrepreneurial mindset related to the personal development. We are leaders in this. We can become better people through entrepreneurial mindset as well. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you so much sir, for such an energetic session. We really enjoyed it and we have learned a lot as I was just going through the chat box and the comments which were from our educators, they all really enjoyed and they all are saying that the information, informative session was there. Thank you so much sir. Now I request the educators if they are having any query or any question, they can raise their hand or they can pop it in the chat box. Mr. Sonatan, he has raised his hand. Hello, hello, sir. Am I audible? Yes, you are. Thank, uh, thank you, sir. Uh, can I ask a question? Yes, you can. Uh, why is a creative mindset important for entrepreneur? Sorry, can you repeat your question? Why is a creative mindset important for entrepreneurs? Ah, <laughs> yes, it's a good question. And it's very easy to be answered because the mindset for the entrepreneurial mindset and in relation to a person who calls himself entrepreneur is very attached we need, we have a strong relation with that because that is what is going to give you the power to be called entrepreneur, entrepreneurial mindset. The mindset is something that is here. If, imagine that you have the chip on your cell phone. Have you got a cell phone? It has a chip. So the mindset is the chip that we have in our mind in entrepreneurial way. It's, Analyzing all the aspects that I have explained before, or I have mentioned before, to deal with this. So being an entrepreneur is having all the characteristics that I have shown you. So this is part of it. Entrepreneurial mindset and in, an entrepreneur, the entrepreneur is the person who deals with this. Okay, thank I don't you, know sir. if I have answered your question. Yes, yes. Can I ask another question, sir? Of course, all the questions that you want, but if the time allows that. <laughs> yes, sir. No <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Okay, sir. Why, why is a positive attitude important for entrepreneurs? Oh, positive very interesting <laughs> question. Because if you don't have a positive aptitude, you have a negative one. The opposite of positive is negative. And the negative aptitude can lead you to depression. And depression is not good because imagine you are depressed, you don't go forward. Through depression, you go backward. And we need always to go forward in business, in enterprises, entrepreneurship. Go forward. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you very much, uh, ma'am. Thank you for the that question, time. Sonata. Great. Uh, thank you, thank, sir. Thank you. thank you so much, sir, for answering the query. Really, it was a wonderful session. We all learned a lot from you. Thank you so much, sir. Now, I would like to take an opportunity to introduce our next speaker, Mr. Edward, Principal and Chief Learning in Weglist at Global Academy of Holistic Leadership and Coaching, CEO at Prona Television Canada, Edmonton, Canada, to share his view on topic the role of innovation and entrepreneurship in education for achieving sustainable development goals. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Can I share my screen? I think I can, right? Okay. Yes, sir, you can.
All right. Um, uh, I'm humbled and it's my honor uh, to share my thoughts with you, all the eminent speaker and educators. So today I'll be sharing with you a few thoughts um, about entrepreneurship and innovation. Uh, my background, uh, 20 years, uh, I taught university, number of university in India, Bangladesh and um, Canada. Uh, but last eight years, since 2012, I have been, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a serial entrepreneur and now I'm an edupreneur. So I have seen ups and down. So I will also share my experience as an, a practitioner or as an entrepreneur, not, not only the academics, but also in terms of um, my experience, what are the challenges that entrepreneurs are facing so, let's see, where is that? okay. So, as you know, that um, we already discussed, I won't go into much details, but innovation and entrepreneurship is very important. As you know, it boosts economic growth by introducing innovation, uh, innovative technologies, products, and services. And we know that we have uh, increased competitions, and due to pandemic, uh, we do have a lot of challenges and is becoming very competitive and entrepreneurs provide new job opportunities for short and long term. Now we are especially focused on school education, how we can integrate on uh, innovation and entrepreneurship. Now here, um, I would like to share with you one poem, which is, I like to bring positivity. I like to bring that uh, positivity to you. So the poem for all entrepreneur, I say the road to success is paved with test so you have got to believe in yourself above the rest. Dream big and let your passion uh, shine. If you don't, you won't, you won't end up with a dime. Challenge the status quo, disrupt the market and say yes. And remember that innovation is an endless quest. Don't forget to change business for good. If you want to change the world, then you should. If you think with your head and listen to your heart, I promise you'll get off to a flying start. Make bold moves, but always play fair. Always say, please and thank you. It's cool to care. Do what you love and love what you do. This advice is nothing new. Now stop worrying about whether your business will be a hit. Rise to a challenge and say, screw, screw it, let's do it. I'd like to share with you a very brief uh, experience. Um, uh, I'm an Edupreneur now, last November, we got licensed as a institute, a college here uh, in Canada. But before that, I started a television channel like named Prerona Television. Prerona means inspiration. Uh, when I first started the television channel here, a lot of people discouraged me and I was, um, I didn't know how to start. And uh, it was a, a bit of a great uh, journey that when I started that channel, a lot of work. And um, I don't have any experience, you know, working in media industry. So it was actually interesting. Like you might, as an entrepreneur, you will be getting a lot of, um, a lot of challenges. Even your own family members, your friends, they might discourage you. But entrepreneurs, uh, you have to go forward. Uh, I'd like to share with you one more um, quote here. I said, I believe anything is possible. I see opportunity when others see impossibility. I take risk, I'm focused, I hustle. I know that nothing is unrealistic. I feel overwhelming love. I embrace my childlike wonder and curiosity. I take flying leaps into the unknown. I contribute to something bigger than myself. I create, I learn, I grow, I do. I believe it's never too late to start living a dream. I'm an entrepreneur. And as I'm personally sharing with you, I'm an entrepreneur. And I call like an edupreneur now because I'm in education industry. Uh, so I encourage, you know, as an educator, like you also encourage the, the students uh, so that they can also be an entrepreneur. We, we need entrepreneurs. Now, these are the actually the PEDA, uh, you know, right, the, the how these entrepreneurships are actually embedded into this. So we need to at least understand here that entrepreneurship as a core course of business education. And we can see how we can, um, how it is related to, uh, there are also indigenous practice-based knowledge creation. There is also a research-based knowledge creation. 
and there is a core uh, course effectiveness and pedagogical efficiency. So this is very important how to understand as an educator, because I think uh, right most of you I can educators, eminent educators, and you have been practicing in your uh, field. Uh, now these are the you know right um, different parties. I think uh, you can get social entrepreneur. Uh, in, entrepreneurship or any entrepreneurship you can call it but there are actually role as an individual there is also as a corporation also government or other ngos or other agencies so as an individuals or as an educator or what is what should be our role we need to focus on that now this is the process that entrepreneurship that we can uh, say so what we can say is uh, like developing a business plan and then we can find resourcing and then managing company, harvesting, discovery. So these are the process that we, uh, now my challenge as an entrepreneur, as an educator, how you can teach this uh, knowledge or the process to a school kids. I remember when I was five, grade five, I was given, um, I think less than hundred bucks uh, uh, because we had a fair, you know, a sports event, a school sports event, annual sports event, and I was given that um, hundred dollar, like uh, like like not hundred dollar. I was, I was, I'm from Bangladesh, so it's hundred taka or uh, rupees. So, and then I actually bought chocolates. So I remember, and then I I actually sell the chocolates, and that was my first income. I made profit uh, when I was a grade five. So it was just giving encouragement that you know right when you invest, and you should also um, take risk, take challenges. So that was uh, interesting, you know, right? It was an entrepreneur, you understand entrepreneurship process. The other thing that I would like to share with you, this is just a very um, broad, uh, elaborative uh, in our process. For entrepreneurs, what we are doing as an educator, you are actually um, showing them the skills. So we need to also um, uh, focus on skill development and then problem solving. There is also creativity as uh, Professor uh, uh, Ruben, Dr. Ruben uh, has already shared uh, there also uh, creativity, persuasiveness, uh, pers and planning, negotiating, decision making. So these are the skills that individuals can uh, get. An attribute, what are the attributes are there? Self-confident, autonomous, achievement-oriented, versatile, dynamic, and resourceful. Now here, excuse me, so the process here, what we can do with that, the process here, uh, for entrepreneurship is intentions, triggering events. There is also, right, what we're doing is pro proactivity, actively seeking goals. And what we can see that here, opportunity search and discovery, you can see innovation, opportunity search, coping with and enjoying uncertainty. There is also decision to exploit opportunities. There's a change. And I think the change management, I'm also change management, studied change management practitioner. So what change can also, uh, make a major role here, taking risky actions in uncertain environment, flexibility, responding to challenges. Now exploitation of opportunities, acting independently uh, on own initiative, solving problems, conflict creatively, persuading others, commitment to make things happen. So these are the things that behavior, you know, right, we can see behavior. So if you can uh, follow this process, uh, not only as an educator, but also with the students, you know, right, when we are building teams, when they're doing any projects, school projects, how you can embed those um, uh, tools or techniques or those knowledge uh, to students and then learn, um, like teach them how they can, you know, uh, develop those skills. The other thing this uh, here, I'd like to share with you this entrepreneurship behavior already professor, the earlier speaker already shared, but I would like to share with you that the triggering event that intention has to be there. Understanding about the entrepreneurship, the knowledge, you need to have the knowledge, proper knowledge. I'm learning as a lifelong learner, I'm learning a lot of like uh, boot camps, entrepreneurship boot camps, training and development. This is very important. You need to have knowledge. You also need to have experience, experience in the entrepreneurship process. And then finally, the actions, exploiting the opportunity. That means you have to take an actions. If you don't say, I have also failed. As I said, I'm a serial entrepreneur. I've also failed. But if you don't fail, you don't learn. So you have to fail. 
I have to take steps. Now here, this is my first part of presentation. My second part is actually understanding the quality education, or you can call it holistic education, which is very important as an educator. So this is a quote, actually, uh, one of the uh, Sanskrit uh, quote, that education is the best wealth among all. No one can steal it. No state can snatch it. It cannot be divided among the brothers, and it is not heavy to carry. As one consumes or spend, it increases as one shares is expand. So it's very important as an educator is our noble duty to share this knowledge. Now the holistic approach, why I'm talking the holistic approach, when we are uh, focusing on entrepreneurship and innovation to a school kids, this is a very important to have that holistic approach of education. It is concerned of the development of every individuals, uh, every person, intellectual, emotional, social, physical, artistic, creative and spiritual potential. So what it does here, they are engaging students or learners, teaching and learning process and encourages personal and collective responsibility, which is very important. I guess uh, at this uh, stage that uh, challenges that we are having in uh, pandemic situations, we need to have that holistic perspective of education. The holistic education instill curiosity and develop better communication and social skill. So the holistic approach encourages children to make connections in a subject using their creative skill, develop psychological, social, emotional growth, make learning natural and engaging, which is very important. So these are the holistic education we already shared with you. I think uh, how we can develop this holistic skill as also one of the skill that we need to know as conflict resolution skill, critical thinking skill, emotional development, uh, and then right there are healthy social skills, manners, character formation. So these are the skills that we need to um, have, right? When you have holistic education, which is very important. Now my next part of uh, like uh, presentation, the last part, which how we can use this emotional intelligence um, as an educator to uh, provide this education uh, to uh, students like the innovation and entrepreneurship to students. So EQ is uh, also one of those tools. There are many others, but EQ, uh, uh, the uh, EQ is ability to understand, use, manage your own emotions in a positive way to relieve stress, communicate effectively, empathize with others, overcome challenge and diffuse conflict. One other thing I'd like to share with you, we do have um, two, uh, right, uh, we also provide virtual education. Also, we do uh, provide uh, uh, in-person education. So these are the challenges, uh, like the great challenge for us, like how we can use um, uh, use our tools and techniques, all right, uh, to at least uh, uh, tools and techniques to uh, teach the student. Now here, uh, one of the other course about um, is in Sanskrit, I think is, uh, is found this slokas from Bhagavad Gita chapter two, verse 15. He said, a person who is calm and remain unperturbed by either pain or pleasure, that is the one who attain immortality. So what is the uh, you know, le lesson here is, and as an educator, we need to have you know, that calmness or we need to have that emotional intelligence so that we can, we can be a better and effective instructor teacher or educator. The, uh, the next one, I, will, I won't go into that details, but I would like to focus on emotional intelligence. There are five areas where you can say the self-awareness, self-regulation, empathy, social skills, and motivation. Now here, um, this is very important when you are educating, like when you are um, uh, like a school, uh, children that innovation and entrepreneurship, we need to understand um, how this intrapersonal, interpersonal, you know, right, skills can be taught. Now here, uh, we, uh, we, we can see the emotion, the self-awareness. The first we need to have the self-awareness and then self-management, how we can manage ourselves. And then for work, we can say self-performance. And for interpersonal, we can say social awareness, relationship management, people's performance. So these are the things, our uh, skill, I guess, uh, as an educator, uh, you need to uh, attain. Um, I have been, uh, I'm a certified coach too, uh, but as a lifelong learner, I'm also learning these skills. And it's very important uh, uh, for an educator to learn those skills. Uh, I won't go into that details, but, but sh share 
with you very briefly that how you can develop uh, the self-awareness, the self-awareness, the ability to recognize, understand your own emotion, right? Are we, as an educator, are we understanding our own emotion? Critical emotional intelligence skill. This is very important to understand our emotional uh, state. We need to be aware what we are doing. Uh, we need to also capable of monitoring our own emotion. So here, we need to understand our strength and our limitations. Uh, there are many ways that you can do that. There are, you have a lot, a lot of feedback tools and everything that how you can get, uh, know your own strength and limitations. So. This is very important uh, to also have a good sense of humor. Uh, like as previous speaker, as a very uh, passionate, I can see her, her, uh, his presentation, right? We need to have a good sense of humor, also very passionate about uh, this education. So self-awareness is very important. There are many ways that you can um, improve the self-awareness. Like, especially we are known, we want to focus on innovation and entrepreneurship. So how we can uh, instill this uh, two, uh, uh, this particular tools, uh, techniques to students, now how you can improve self-awareness. So there are, uh, we can ask constructive feedbacks, deep journals, learn new skill, meditate. There are many others, practice mindfulness, set goals, use positive self-talk. So these are the tools that we can use uh, for self-awareness. The next one uh, is uh, called uh, uh, self-regulation, which is very important. So after the self-awareness, how we can regulate or manage our own emotion. As you know that uh, we, uh, we, when we say the self-regulation, it is all about expressing emotion appropriately. As an educator, it is very challenging, even though you are in virtual environment, you need to uh, express your emotion. I remember when I was in school, I, I can see many instructors or many teachers, you know, some of them, they don't have, or uh, they lack, you know, right, how to act appropriately. It is very important. Now, during this pandemic, I guess, as an educator, you need to uh, act appropriately, you have to use your emotion appropriately. So self-regulation is very important. And uh, Goldman also suggests that with strong self-regulation skills are high, highly, uh, you know, right, high in consciousness and they are thoughtful about how they influence others and they take responsibility for their own actions. And as an educator, uh, it is our responsibility to take uh, uh, our, we should take a responsibility for our own action, which is very important. So there are many, um, um, many ways. How can you improve self-regulations? Be mindful of thoughts and feelings will uh, uh, distress tolerance skill, which is very important. I know we, uh, when I was an educator here, I taught in um, Asia and also in Canada. So we can see cultural, you know, right? There is a cultural shock, how uh, students are uh, reacting and things. So sometimes, you know, you need to have this uh, distress tolerance skill. Some students may not be uh, respectful. They are very violent or they're very, uh, not so how you can uh, build a distress tolerance skill find ways to manage difficult emotion look challenges as opportunities practice the practice your communication skill and use cognitive reframing and change thoughts patterns and emotion responses work on accepting your emotion now the next uh, is called empathy uh, the social awareness or empathy so what do you want now uh, empathy is the ability to understand how others are feeling is absolutely critical to emotional intelligence. Uh, so, but it involves more than just being able to recognize emotional states of others. It also involves people based on the information. So when you sense that someone is feeling sad or hopeless, how do you respond? So you might treat them with extra care or concern, or you might make an effort to buy uh, their spirit. Being empathetic also allows you to understand power dynamics that often influence social relationship especially in workplace settings. This is important for guiding your interactions with different people you encounter each day. Those competent in this area are able to sense who possesses uh, power in different relationships. They also understand uh, how these forces influence feelings and behavior. Because of this, they can accurately interpret different situations that hints on such high, uh, uh, such power 
academics. So it's very important, right? Have that build your social awareness skill. So there are many ways that you can build uh, this empathy. Be willing to share your own feeling, engage in cause such as community projects. I've been volunteering with Rotary or many other projects recently. And then uh, I, I actually learned a lot of things. I learned for many use, many, you know, right, uh, engaging uh, in community projects. I also, as a coach, I, I'm now listening, empathetic listening. I learned so many things. And I also gain more clients as an entrepreneur. After I'm just listening to my clients, I said, yes, I'm gaining more clients right now. And this is what is, a, you know, right? You need to have that empathetic listening. Practice loving kindness meditations. Talk to new people. Try to imagine yourself in someone else's place. That's empathy. The next one is uh, the self-motivation, uh, or you can call it motivation. Those intrinsic motivation is another important emotional intelligence skill. People who are emotionally intelligent are motivated by things beyond external rewards like fame, money, recognition, and acclaim. Now, instead of being passion of fulfill their own inner needs and goals, they seek to internal uh, rewards, experience flow from being totally in tune with an activity and pursue peak experiences. Those who are competent in this area tend to be action oriented. They set goals, have a high need for achievement, and they are always looking for ways to do better. They also tend to be very committed and they're good at taking initiative. Now, how you can um, improve this motivation? Uh, when avoid overusing intrinsic reward, celebrate your result, like small, like uh, right now I'm just celebrating my result, like. Uh, like I do small task at a time and then I celebrate the result. It's very, uh, very uh, rewarding. Focus on small uh, and measurable goal. Introduce challenges to keep things interesting and set goals to help build intrinsic motivation. Work with trained co-worker to find accountability. And the next one is social skill, like being able to interact with well with other people uh, important aspect of emotional intelligence, having strong social skill, uh, allow people to build meaningful relationship with other people and develop stronger understanding of themselves and others. Now, the true emotional understanding involves more than just understanding your own emotions and those of others. You also need to be able to put, uh, you also need to be able to put this information to work in your daily interactions and communications. Uh, in a professional settings, managers benefit by being able to build relationships and connections with employees. Worker benefits from being able to develop a strong rapport with leaders and co-workers. Importing social skills include active listening, verbal communication skill, non-verbal communication skill, leadership and persuasiveness. So this is social skill. How we can develop this social skill? Ask open-ended question. Find icebreakers that will help start conversation. Notice other people's social skills and uh, practice good, good eye, eye contact. Eye contact is very important, right? You need to focus on uh, the person, that person feel that you are with them, you respect, you love them. Practice your social skill. Practice active listening. Show interest in the others. Watch body language. Some body language can be offensive to other, right? We need to also have culture education. Some colors can be also offensive to others. Uh, some, so you need to be aware of those uh, things. Now, uh, you might ask question that why I am uh, sharing this uh, emotional intelligence? Because as an entrepreneur, I, I learned, I'm certified like emotional intelligence uh, coach also. So I, I, when I actually learn emotional intelligence, I gain more clients. Uh, and I, I, I have a now uh, approach like uh, with my, you know, I, I have an empathetic listen. I listen to clients. I listen to my, you know, right, uh, all the clients and it is actually helping me to gain more uh, businesses. So, and as an, as an educators, like when we are uh, talking about school educations, innovation and entrepreneurship, we can embed uh, this emotion entrepreneurship by using the emotion and intelligence tools and techniques. With that, thank you very much. It is my honor uh, and privilege that I share with you some information. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for speaking to us on this conference. Um, now, I would like to take a question by Mr. George. He's asking like humanity plus patience plus self-management is equal to 
how important are these for the educators and the entrepreneurial team sorry i didn't uh, okay what is the question oh. humanity plus patience plus self management how these things are important for the educators and the entrepreneurial team as you know that uh, first we need to ask why you were in this uh, particular industry right education so when we use those um, what uh, what has been discussed i think it is very important uh, when we have this uh, things then you are you are equipped you feel um, that you are competent you feel you are you have uh, you have the skill to share with this one and when uh, learners or educ uh, the students are actually i think you will be uh, you will be having uh, you will be a great resource to them so it is very important to have those skills yes thank you so much sir now we would like to take the question by uh, shri devi it seems like uh, she is having some technical issue i was going through the comments sir the students were really saying that the uh, the educators were really saying that they, you move the 360 degree in the field of entrepreneurship their minds are have been really stick toward the particular thing but after having your session we really loved it and we really seems like that they are, it's all going to help us in the future thank you so much sir and thank you sorry, so much sorry i took for, some time extra time sorry it's, a, it's okay yeah. sir it's okay thank you yeah. so much sir for sharing your personal opinion it was really appreciable thank you thank you we feel honored to have with us the panel you all hardly need any introduction you have made all us proud of your distinguished work in numerous field you are one of the most celebrate foreign science service delegates for the topic the for the topic for the today's panel discussion is the role of innovation and entrepreneurship in school education for achieving sustainable development goal now i request today's um, uh, mediator uh, dr shilan mishra head management studies and ed cell new horizon college of engineering Bang uh, bangalore karnataka over to you ma'am Thank you so much, Karlene, for introducing me, uh, and a whole hearty welcome to all the panel members. And uh, I'm I, I was really uh, very happy to listen to all the previous speakers. Uh, uh, Prabhin Bandal sir, uh, you have given a wonderful uh, session, a wonderful presentation. Thank you so much. Uh, for today's panel, our dis our topic is. the role of innovation and entrepreneurship in school education for achieving sustainable development goals i think more than ever this is a time when all the countries are talking about sdgs and there are certain 17 sdgs which are listed by united nations and the one which are focused on education are more prevailing right now especially in our country as well when we talk about education there has been a paradigm shift which is happening right the role of education was seen as the something which was uh, creating the uh, experts in the subject knowledge which was creating thoughtful citizens creating lot of self esteem and confidence among the students lifelong habits for work and how how is it you know teach students how to learn yeah this has been the major goals of education till now but the kind of changes which are happening across the world especially in technology the there's a shift which is happening in the goal of education as well from traditional education we are moving towards more of entrepreneurship education right from a simple we are moving towards slightly more complex structures when i say complex structure we are trying to get into more experiential learning more practical based learning more workshop based learning somewhere there was a concrete structure now there is a plan to move into the social structures right if the traditional education is was more of passive learning now people are looking at active learning 
So there has been education in various countries, which was mixed of both, which was mixed of both. But if you look at various countries, for them, it's going to be paradigm shift from traditional to the innovation and entrepreneurship laden education. Now with this, uh, with this small base, I welcome all my panelists. They are very learned in their field and I'm very happy to be part of this panel with all of them. Uh, may I now request all the panel members to share their views one by one, I'll be inviting you. And I request you to also kind of keep the time in mind since we are already at Indian standard time 620, means let's look at another uh, 30 minutes to complete the panel discussion so that we can still finish it in time. So can I start, I'll go in the order of the list which is given to me for the panel members. So can I request Dr. Leo H. Eberion, kindly excuse me if I'm not able to pronounce the name correctly, please excuse me for that. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. Dr. Leo, you're most welcome to share your views. Okay, so uh, hello everyone. I'm very glad to be invited for given the opportunity to, be, to share my knowledge about the role of innovation and entrepreneurship in school education for achieving sustainable development goals. So as Mom Shilan, Shilan, Dr. Shilan mentioned a while ago about the sustainable development goals, all of the countries are following to that particular SDGs. But the challenges now are on our resources, considering that uh, still the Philippines is a developing country and we have this global pandemic we are still suffering now. We are still in, in the process of several lockdowns or different uh, quarantine measures. So um, supposedly we are going forward, but because of the pandemic, we were shifted to another learning modality, which hinders. This, this learning modalities hinder our educators and also our, our leaders in the Department of Education, we call it Department of Education under the executive department. They were, uh, we were shocked because we were not prepared about what modality. So now we are moving forward on what particular way or direction are we going to, to provide to our students, consider, especially in terms of innovation and entrepreneurship, considering that all of us or the, 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 the president of the Republic of the Philippines is still uh, not allowing us to conduct face-to-face -face classes. So that's the, these are our challenges because for me and as an educator and at the same time also as a school leader, for me, knowledge starts at home. And also when you talk about innovation, it's about skills, which is coupled with entrepreneurship or these are about how to sustain or how to maintain. That's why now I am uh, because of the pandemic. I call it also as a blessing, as it gives a positive impact with my family. Because because of this pandemic, we were for the four month lockdown last year. We were able to have our own training center, and my employees are my children. So they are now even if they're already in, still in the senior high school and in the university level, they are now earning. And I taught them the very basic on how to start a business and how to manage a business especially in terms of marketing so it was mentioned already a while ago about the different skills i agree with the speakers about the important skills to be uh, enhanced like for example communication skills decision making skills critical thinking skills and everything it's very important to to hone our children so especially uh, sir edward professor edward mentioned about a holistic education is very important moving forward on how to prepare our students to prepare their, themselves because they are the future generations they are the hope of our country they will of course we will grow old and considering that of the pandemic we do not know whether we are still present or we are still alive tomorrow we do not know that's why i, I in my own case I, based on what I've learned in, in education, I, I, ha, I have now my, my own training center, my own school, and I am developing starting from my family. And of course, I'm sharing this to my, my students, to the teachers as well. And also we have to equip our teachers on how to, to enhance, on how to impart this knowledge of innovation, how to utilize the, innovate, the, the skills, the ideas from our students in order for them to apply, to survive, and also, especially to, to utilize the, the scarce resources, especially in our situation wherein most of the, the parents or most of the businesses are closing 
because of the global pandemic. So thank you so much. That, that's all I can share as of this moment. And maybe later on with, when there are questions, I, I can also share. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Leo, for such a wonderful and brief sharing. And uh, very uh, well mentioned about that, yes, when we talk about uh, entrepreneurship or innovative education, we're focusing more on building those skills, which are the need of the uh, today. So uh, going forward, may I request uh, Ms. Hasna to please uh, share your views? Yes. Uh, I'm audible. Yes, you are. Yes. Hello, everyone. I would like to thank the organizer for this international webinar for allowing us to talk about this important topic. And my talk will be about what is directly related to the school and the classroom. Of course, as a teacher and uh, educator, how we can encourage and foster innovation and entrepreneurship to achieve the sustainable development goals. Uh, first, I would like to draw your attention that sometimes the teacher is not uh, accurately aware of these goals or some of them. So it is necessary first that the 17 development goals are tangibly available within the institutions, schools for teachers and in a simplified way for students on the grounds that uh, they are noble goals. So the students daily contact with these goals. It is what uh, will drive him to creativity and innovation as the student is always motivated by nature to achieve great goals to achieve his internal uh, stimulus. Uh, and uh, how can entrepreneurship be taught in schools? This is very important. One of the biggest challenges facing the world is the increase in employment rates, which need to develop radical solutions according to effective strategies that help in uh, overcoming them. Employment opportunities and the optimal use of capital. Uh, some countries of the world in the recent period have taken a new curve to expand the circle of learning and mastering all the concepts related to the world of entrepreneurship. It adopted uh, some strategies that uh, varied between educational programs and study materials for entrepreneurship in the pre-university education stage to motivate students to generate pioneering ideas that can be converted into successful projects on the ground, in addition to encouraging them to be business owners instead of looking for job opportunities. The economic changes and the fluctuations in the career sector all over the world have imposed on global societies to teach the concepts and terms of entrepreneurship from childhood tooth to the various uh, through the various uh, stages of education we can say that uh, spreading the culture of entrepreneurship across educational uh, sectors has become one of the necessi necessities that governments of countries must implement quickly to inculcate culture of self employment and uh, as as for the methods of teaching entrepreneurship in schools, it must raise the efficiency of teachers first before starting to implement the idea of teaching the concepts of entrepreneurship in schools. It is necessary to raise the efficiency of teachers and train them on the latest methods that can be used to simplify the concepts of entrepreneurship and to provide them with skills that make them mentors and not uh, traditional teachers and uh, all this can be achieved through the assistance of a number of experts in pioneering world. The culture of self-employment or entrepreneurship can be spread among all students by making entrepreneurship education mandatory for all students of all educational levels, such as primary, middle, secondary, and possibly university education, as well to inculcate entrepreneurial skills in the student's mind. 
uh, facilitate the sharing of content. It is very important for educational institutions to establish a specialized center for exchanging information related to modern methods of teaching and the possibility of exchanging curricula and different methods that can be relied upon in teaching the concepts of uh, entrepreneurial work. Educational institutions should prepare all the study seats and design modern classrooms that contribute to strengthening the group learning system according to the latest methods. This make the environment uh, suitable for the teacher and students, which uh, increases the students' uh, appreciative capacity, uh, capacity. And I want to, I, I want to talk about um, uh, how did the educational system in Morocco, especially in Morocco, contribute to integrating these two concepts of entrepreneurship and innovation in the school curricula. First, I would like to point out that the National Charter for Education, which is a consensus between the various components of Moroccan society, has opened the door since the year uh, uh, 2000 to achieve noble goals and objectives, which are based uh, mainly on encouraging educational uh, encouraging uh, educational uh, uh, innovation and uh, adapting curricula to enhance students' learning of these basics of critical and uh, creative thinking. Uh, the focus is mainly on developing higher thinking skills, which encourage the student to research and creativity instead of memorization and uh, indoctrination, which is no longer uh, in line with the challenges of the 21st century uh, and even impedes the achievement of sustainable development goals. Uh, the new curriculum has also been integrating financial education at the primary level and uh, accustoming uh, students to financial planning and management in its uh, simplified form since the lower levels in the Moroccan school. It is uh, worth noting that the Moroccan educational system has created a permanent committee to renew and adapt the curricula in uh, parallel with the uh, everything new in the educational uh, and development, uh, whether nationally or internationally, uh, work is uh, carried out with Moroccan schools with several pedagogical models, including the pedagogy of, uh, of the project, uh, whether the school project, the classroom project, which the learners the students prepare collectively, collectively, collectively under the supervision of their teacher or the students' uh, personal project, which uh, the learner works on uh, through his years of study and has an impact on his future uh, professional orientation. Uh, in the, I believe that the sustainable development goals should be essential in any educational system uh, whatever it is, considering that uh, they summarize our goals that we seek to achieve as countries and individuals, and any reform, uh, whatever it is, must be based on the school, as it is the first nucleus of any positive change that uh, stems far from the school towards the community, and we should not neglect the role of the teacher in any change of reform. Uh, thank you again for making us a part of this successful and wonderful webinar. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Hasna, for sharing your vibrant thoughts. And the two very important points which I can recall you know, from your talk. Uh, spreading the culture of entrepreneurship has become a crucial for government now to uh, implement, to generate more and more self-employment. And yes, very rightly said, it is very important for any government now to enable the teachers towards the entrepreneurship education because teachers can only bring in that revolution which we are aiming at. So thank you so much for sharing your wonderful thoughts. So after two very good speakers, uh, Dr. Leo from Philippines and uh, Ms. Hasna from Morocco. Now let's hear from uh, another great speaker from Libya. Uh, Ms. Marwa, may I request you to please share your views on the topic of the international webinar today? Assalamu alaikum. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, my name is Marwa Suwehli from Libya. I'm a teacher from 22 years. 
and uh, I'm, I'm now I'm teach the chemistry for all as well, but uh, great. And uh, and Musrata uh, uh, Center School for the teenager boys. And now uh, we have the baccalaureate degree. They will be uh, going to the university at last year. Uh, we are so late uh, in Libya uh, to complete our uh, to complete our uh, class this uh, this uh, year. Uh, of course, because uh, Corona, that's the first things, and because I think the bad strategy uh, for the education ministry too. So um, now I'm talking about education strategy uh, follow Libya uh, from the this last year, the last century and this century too. How we can teach her a child challenge or challenge this, uh, the situation, the best situation in the education uh, situation in Libya. Uh, at first, uh, uh, at the 15th from the last uh, century, uh, we have a good uh, the king uh, and government, old government at that time, uh, the kingdom of our uh, nation now, Libya nation, but uh, the, that in the 15th from the last century, uh, it was this uh, this country was the, uh, have a kingdom uh, government. Uh, at the 15th, at the 15th century, at the last time, at the last century, at the 50th at last century, uh, we'll start to the good and the strong uh, education system. Uh, it was a free and this is very slow to a development, but it's what it was uh, stable. Uh, the first education strategy used in Libya and attempts to develop them. Education in Libya seems made available and free and the 50s, uh, the principle of uh, uh, of kind great of kind greater was established was where the teachers as their number was very few by bringing teachers from the state of Egypt uh, at that time. Learning began in Arabic development and the first university was the University of Benghazi in, in 1956, followed by the Faculty of Science Tripoli University, 1957 in Tripoli. Uh, also, many children had in uh, the 30s during Italian uh, people. And it seemed slow, the education seemed slow, but it was effective and moving at the steady pace. As the University of Libya were according globally, and the graduates were very uh, studying two specialization together, two specializations, specialization together to make up for uh, the shortage. And many were sent abroad to return and perform their academic uh, duties toward their country. The development was continued until the beginning of the, eight, of the 80s of the last century. And the Libyan student become now for their excellence. Uh, the uh, the curia were local and uh, written by Libyan authors. A large number of academics uh, of different nationalities were brought the universities and schools and their own housing uh, was built at the university. Where the Libyan universities were with the advanced global evolution, however, they, there was been a sharp decline in education since uh, 20, 2084, uh, 20, uh, 1984, when the years of the, of the sea began after the, uh, the, Lucre, the Lucrebi incident, which caused her isolation, uh, Lucrebi accident. accident. Uh, Libyan was isolation country. Uh, no academic anymore visit this country. Uh, this, this, the, uh, the curricular remind is strong enough to uh, mention a scientific standing for university graduates. 
uh, this line was used, uh, was issued for what is called uh, a scientific revolution that was uh, circulated to uh, in situation in, in institution in which English and French book were born. It. This is in the primary and secondary stages. The effect the affected the opt uh, out uh, outputs of universities and become lower than before. In addition to the increase in the regulations of foreign uh, academic due to the administrative choose uh, choose and scientific situation, and the uh, computer were not known to the Libyans uh, uh, until uh, 19, 1988. There is one institution for them uh, called Garyunis, and long procedures take two years to obtain computer. The computer culture spread, and two schools for electronic scientists sciences were opening. And they were popular with young people, which, contru which uh, contributed to breaking the isolation and introducing young people to the world through the internet, which was limited at that time. And their use of Yahoo in uh, correspondence. Also learning English began to meet with a large popular uh, demand. So private school were opening for it. This forced that the government to return it to the circular for reform. The circular began and the import of courses from other countries uh, become more, rap uh, more relevant than those writing by local academic. Science at Science uh, 25, 2005, we have been offered what we call the Singapore, the Singapore uh, Circulum, which was far from the culture of the Libyans and their local environment and did not find acceptance and its uh, outputs are weak due to uh, the lack of uh, acceptance of the learner and teacher for it. And it did not contribute to improve the level of students and thus the university's output and it is still used until now. This curriculum has a certain uh, requirement such a laboratory trip and classroom displays. And one of its conditions is that the number of students does not exist. 20 in each class. And this is not available in crowded schools. All these failures uh, from the government lead to the uh, emergence of uh, individual and, uh, initiative from teachers to improve education that developed and began to take professional forms, especially after the corona pandemic, during which uh, we meet uh, uh, college from different cities through uh, educational uh, platforms in different applications, such as Google, Google Teams and Zoom. Admissions was not easy and still require more distance education, but students now have electronic devices. And mm -hmm. 
and they it is very easy to communicate. Miss Marwa, we are we're losing your voice. And they have become, it also uh, contributed, and uh, they use all accredited uh, uh, to start inside Libya. As mentioned, uh, this is why you hear. Okay, this chance, chance. You hear me? Okay, thank you, ma'am. Ma Do you hear me? Yes, yes. Can you hear me? Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. Okay, okay. Of course, sorry. Um, okay. Thank you. You will. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you. So, after listening to the speakers uh, from Libya, Morocco, and Philippines, let me now take this opportunity to invite. Ms. Hafsa from Algeria. You're welcome, Ms. Hafsa, to this international webinar. And I request you to please share your views. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much, Dr. Shilan. I just would like to share my screen. Hi everyone, my name is Mrs. Hafsa Hajbunwar. I'm both Sultan Tassel certified EFL teacher and a current secondary school teacher. First of all, I'd like to welcome you for joining me in this presentation entitled Teaching Sustainability in the English Language Classroom. Also, I'd like to thank all the previous presenters for the fruitful uh, sessions they have just done. They were really informative and productive. Uh, also, I would like to know if you have any questions or something to say, please write me in the chat box and I'll try to answer all your questions. So in this presentation, we'll try to answer the following questions. What is sustainable development? Does sustainability matter to our students? How can I teach sustainability as an EFL teacher? And some lesson ideas for teaching sustainability with some practical resources that I would love to share with the prison. Okay, so um, before answering those questions, there is a quote that I would like to reflect on by the Mahatma Gandhi be the change you wish to see in the world. What does that mean and how is it related to our topic of today? Well, I say that we are teachers, we are change makers, we have a huge responsibility towards our learners to make them involved in environmental and sustainable issues while teaching them the language. We are teachers. As teachers, we are not only concerned with teaching grammar and vocabulary, we are concerned with teaching them to be environmentally aware and eco-conscious about what's going on around us in the world, to become critical thinkers, lifelong learners, and future world citizens. So, to become future world citizens. They need to understand what is sustainable development. So this concept is actually defined according to the United Nations World Commission on Environment and Development as development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. What does that mean? I'm going to try to reformulate it in other words. Sustainability is all about using the available resources, renewable or non-renewable, to develop, to prosper, and to meet our present needs without damaging or affecting the environment. Because it's our responsibility 
as world citizens, it's our responsibility towards our children, our grandchildren, our future generations to let them live in a safe green planet. So this sustainability is actually divided into four types or it stands under four pillars that can be shown in the pictures below. As you see, we have four pictures. The first one is for a child at school. The second one is for a group of people, which is about togetherness. The third one is for a tree. And the last one, as you see, money. So these are actually the four pillars of sustainability. The first one is human sustainability, which is about the individual well-being. And it is concerned with topics like leadership, gender equality, quality education, physical and mental health. The second type is not only concerned with the individual, but rather a group of people who form a community and it is called social sustainability. It studies topics like peace, community development, equal opportunities and human rights. The next one is related to environmental sustainability, which is about nature about the protection of environmental resources. And it uh, discusses climate change, energy use, waste control, and recycling. The last type is about financial growth. It's about management of money. It discusses profitability, job creation, cost savings, and cost of living. And it is called economic sustainability. So these four pillars are really important for us as EFL teachers and for our learners, especially. Now, does sustainability matter to our students? This is the question. I believe yes, due to its various advantages that I'm going to mention just some of them. The first one is about raising awareness of global issues and problems that touch our children's lives. Because no matter where are you from or where do you live, we are all responsible about our planet, our green globe that we all live in. The second um, advantage is about empowering children with language to talk about global issues. When I teach sustainability, I'm providing my students, I'm providing my learners with the language they need to discuss and to talk about global issues. I'm helping them to talk confidently, most importantly, and to express their points of view freely without any constraints. The third um, advantage is developing critical thinking and problem solving skills. I am enabling my learners to make reasonable judgments that are logical, thoughtful, and to identify the problems, search for the causes, effects, and how to solve them most importantly. The next one is providing opportunities to think out of the box. So I'm encouraging my students' creativity to be creative and innovative. Most importantly, I just forgot the one before, which is encouraging the belief that it is the responsibility of everyone. So it's not the responsibility of one person. We live as a group. We live in a community. So the most important thing we need is to collaborate with each other to maintain sustainability in our schools, in our classrooms, and in our world. The next uh, part is about integrating values, which help to promote reflective, sorry, reflective thinking. So what is reflective thinking? I'm going to help my learners to 
think about their previous actions before and after what am I teaching them? Am I going to make a change in their current attitudes and behaviors? Are they going to apply what they have learned in the classroom outside of the classroom walls? So I'm helping them to make responsible choices to manage their principal behavior. Now, how can I teach sustainability in the classroom? This is the question that every EFL teacher falls across. How to teach it? Well, I'm going to make it easier for you. It's BOMP. What does that BOMP stands for? Well, B stands for background. The first thing you have to take into consideration is the background of your students their age, their nationality, their needs, level, interests, and culture, most importantly. All these play a role when shaping your lesson about sustainability. The second mm, phase is objectives. As teachers in every lesson, we must take into consideration what are the intermediate objectives for my lesson. So they, we must include collaboration between our learners. They should work in pairs and in groups. You should help them to be creative and to think outside of the box. Enhance their creativity, their critical thinking, and autonomous learning. Help them to learn, not only in the classroom, I repeat, but also outside of the classroom. The third um, point is M. M stands for materials. Where am I going to take my materials from? Well, you can search online, use the textbook, uh, choose your materials. The most important thing you should take into consideration is that they have to be authentic, okay? And they have to be adapted and related according to the curriculum you are teaching with. As an Algerian teacher myself, I include sustainability in my lessons. But how and when? This is the most important question. I have, for example, a theme in second year classes, a unit about waste not, want not. So this is already about nature. I am going to include sustainable development in any phase I would like to teach. In a reading lesson, writing, speaking, grammar, any type of chaos lessons. It depends on how am I going to adapt it. Also, I should take into consideration that the learning styles and strategies of my learners are really important. I should take into consideration their multiple intelligences. I don't have only one student in my classroom. I have several students who learn differently. And in my classroom, everyone should have a chance and opportunity to learn. So I should take into consideration that I have visual learners, I have auditory learners, and I have kinesthetic learners. And I should adapt my teaching strategies and methods according to my learners, of course. The third or the fourth point is P, which is pedagogy. So how am I going to manage all these points in relation to pedagogy? They must be related to communicative language teaching. I am there to help my students to learn the English language, most importantly. I should give them an opportunity to speak and to express their communicative language skills, to be able to communicate effectively in the target language. Also, it should be student-centered. They are the center of the learning process. As a teacher, my role there is just a facilitator, a guide, an inspirer who is there just to give them a help a hand of help, not to be the knowledge holder. So here I would love to share with you some lesson topics for teaching 
sustainability. Um, they, I have tried some of them and they are really interesting, especially for young learners. The first one is uh, reduce, reuse, recycle. Uh, the three R's to cut back the amount of trash we generate. So uh, the second uh, topic is about food waste. The third one is about alternative energy resources, solar energy, wind energy, etc. As an Algerian uh, citizen myself, my country has only or most efficiently non-renewable resources. So I should make my learners aware of the alternative energy resources we will need in the future. The Amazon rainforest is just a wonderful topic. Also, you can adapt it to your country. Any famous rainforest in your country would be just engaging for your learners, biodiversity and pollution with its several times. Now, some lesson activities for teaching sustainability. We have the first activity that I personally tried with my learners and they really enjoyed it rubbish bin sorting activity. You have just four bins in the classroom, plastic, um, uh, plastic, uh, food, glass, and paper. And you, you bring any trash you find, any garbage you have in your house, and you just let them sort, okay? They are learning how to sort things, and they will try it at that homes okay you are helping them to change the attitude inside the classroom and outside the classroom they need to try this at home with the parents to make a change in the community also energy free day you can adapt it to the level of your learners energy free day or one hour free energy it depends and they are going also to try it outside and inside the classroom, build a class garden. It would be loads of fun. Um, flowers garden, a veggie garden, anything. It would be amazing. How can we make our classroom more sustainable? You are going to help them to be productive, innovative and critical thinkers. I've tried with this activity with my learners and they astonished me. They brought loads of ideas that I didn't think about myself. And we tried them and it was amazing. Read books about the earth. So every student would go to the library of the school, take a book about nature, about the earth and read it. After that, we meet all together and everyone is going to share his ideas. What have he learned from the book he read? We will all learn from each others. The last one is reuse items for crafts. Anything they don't need at home, they will try to reuse it to create something new. They are not going to throw it, but to reuse it. This is the point. So we are making um, long-term change in their behaviors. Now, I would love to share with you some resources for teaching sustainability. Uh, uh, Ms. Hapsa, if I can, if I can, uh, since we're running out of time, so just request you to, it's a very, very interesting session going on. Thank uh, you. I'm so sorry to uh, interrupt. Uh, if you can wrap it up. This fast, is the last really slide, helpful. actually. Please, please go ahead. Please go ahead. Thank you very much. So resources for teaching sustainability, you can find resources everywhere. But here I would love to share just some very important ones that any EFL teacher would need. We have talks that maybe we will try to adapt them in a speaking lesson. We have TEDx. You can just type it. You have lots of uh, speakers and talks about any topic you would like to adapt in your classroom. We have MP3 audios for a listening lesson. I would love to share with you listenaminute.com. It is really interesting and you will find a lot of resources for yes teachers that you can adapt in your classrooms. At any level you want, beginner, intermediate, advanced, everything is there. We have videos from YouTube, of course, 
the famous YouTube. Uh, if you are tired, there are ready-made lesson plans. Just go to sustainablelearning.com. Everything is there about sustainability. Any lesson you'd like to adapt in your classroom, it's already made. You have just to take it, print it, and teach it. We have photos, pixforlearning.com, and we have songs. Our students really enjoy songs. So songsforteaching.com about nature and sustainability are really interesting to make them as a resource while teaching your language. As a photo, for example, this photo is a really um, informative for our learners. We can adapt it as a warming up or leading activity. So thank you very much. I really enjoyed presenting this uh, workshop. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Hafsa, for such a wonderful sharing. Uh, we wish you would have really more time to listen to you. Uh, uh, as you said, students need to have awareness of global issues and something as important as sustainable development goals as well. And bomb model that you shared is really, really, very really amazing. Now, moving on to our next speaker, uh, Che Azura Hanim. May I request you to please share your thoughts and also request you, uh, you know, in favor of time, uh, because we are lined up with few more speakers uh, after our panel. Yes. Uh, so I think uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, first hello and uh, I hope that all uh, of you are all in uh, good conditions because I think uh, all of us are facing a pandemic currently, right? So first of all, I would like to thank uh, the organizer for inviting me to, to share my views in this uh, wonderful conference. So Dr. Shilan, how many minutes do I have? I try to wrap up uh, as much as I can. So. Basically, uh, today I would like to share with all of you in terms of my uh, journey as an edupreneur. Okay, uh, I think about eight years uh, as an educator, and then I just uh, going into it, uh, entrepreneur uh, leading the InnoHub, which is uh, research uh, from our research in the lab. Uh, to be a, a small startup company. So maybe I would like to share with you because our topic today is about the role of innovation and entrepreneurship. So I'm not sure whether how many of you are aware about design thinking because I think in order to make sure that our students have both uh, skills in innovation and entrepreneurship, I think uh, we need to teach our students in terms of uh, design thinking. I think design thinking is really important because uh, in design thinking, uh, our students will be introduced in terms of uh, they need to be empathized, they need to define what is the current uh, real world problem, and then they need to ideate, and then they need to come up with prototype, and then they need to test the prototype. So uh, usually for in my class, although I'm teaching uh, different subjects uh, in uh, my faculty, but I usually uh, put this design thinking in each and every uh, class and then try to put like, uh, for me, I think each and every uh, topic in my lecture as well, I try to relate with uh, the design thinking because I strongly believe that uh, all human beings have an ability to uh, design. So I think I would like to give the uh, freedoms to my students in order to make sure that uh, maybe previously they don't have the opportunity to, to design something, right? So in my class, usually I start with design thinking and then uh, we would like to, uh, to have a look towards the end of the semester, how the student can achieve the, uh, the, what they learn through the design thinking. So uh, apart from that, I would like to share with you because when we talk about innovation, because uh, currently as a re in, uh, because University of Putra Malaysia is one of a research university. So basically in our uh, class also, we need to make sure that our students know how to do research. And because I'm teaching uh, physics and nanotechnology, and then I think now because uh, entrepreneurship and innovation, we also need technology. So basically, um, what I I can uh, what I can uh, say that when I have a look at the the entrepreneurship, they have their own uh, step, and the step as entrepreneur is similar to step as a, a research or innovation. First, you need to make sure you need to investigate the 
or you need to know what is the uh, what is the current problem okay and then you need to or usually in uh, entrepreneur we have what we call if you come up with a product you need to know what is your usp right unit selling point so similar as entrepreneur and then in research or innovation you need to know what is the unit uh, selling point of your uh, research as well so of course the first one in research you need to know what is the current uh, problem and then how can your research overcome the problem the next step in uh, entrepreneur the first one is in investigation or research phase the next step is planning so similar in entrepreneur or in innovation we need to have a planning phase followed by a, a startup phase or uh, in research we need to uh, what we call uh, do some optimization optimization in lab so similar to entrepreneur we need to uh, do what we call a market validation okay so then we need to uh, do the operation and then monitoring followed by what are the problem uh, or what are the challenge that we face so similar in uh, research so when you conduct the research sometimes uh, you have the hypothesis but you cannot after you conduct the experiment, sometimes you didn't uh, achieve the hypothesis. So that means that you are now are uh, having what we call problem or challenge. Then you need to do what we call. Uh, Abhi ye bio mapping se start. Bio mapping se start karna hai. Sorry. Yeah, okay. Uh, okay. So then uh, followed by we need to have a look. What are the next? Uh, level so maybe once you know the problem then you need to overcome or you need to find another uh, approach so uh, in our group usually uh, for currently because like my students um, in terms of research uh, we are focusing on sdg uh, 3 which is health and well-being so for example in health and well-being we know that uh, in, because malaysia also developing country and then uh, currently my research focusing on cancer so what uh, we have a look is you know like when uh, a person that being diagnosed with cancer sometimes the problem is the cause so in my research i would like to uh, educate my students is it possible that with the knowledge of design thinking with the knowledge of uh, nanotechnology with the knowledge of uh, synthesis of uh, new materials for uh, cancer research is it possible for us to come up with a very uh, cheap materials for targeted drug delivery because i think uh, the cost for uh, cancer treatment is uh, quite quite high because of the uh, because currently we are uh, rely on the high cost uh, drug for example so that's why uh, currently uh, we are focusing on the health and well-being apart from that i also uh, focusing on quality education so for in terms of quality education, I try to use uh, a lot of uh, different approach in class so that the students not only uh, learn about fundamentals. So they need to relate the fundamentals that they learn in class to the real uh, world problem. And then how can they use uh, whatever that they learn in order to overcome the, uh, the real world problem. And the next, uh, I would like to share uh, because currently I think uh, in Malaysia, we also uh, having a problem with a uh, clean water and sanitation. So that's uh, another area that uh, we are focusing on. So we are basically uh, in our group, we focusing on uh, try to create a new materials that can, uh, you know, like if you have a, live, a river that uh, polluted by uh, dyes, for example, or anything that uh, not uh, good for your health so how can this uh, nanomaterials absorb the uh, the pollution okay so in in terms of that i would like to also share with you in terms of like uh, when we talk about innovation entrepreneurship i think we need uh, three things we need an inf inspiring environment i think uh, in university or in school so university and schools uh, i think I look at them as an inspiring uh, environment where in this inspiring environment, the students and the teacher can then collaborate together to create the value and they both can innovate together. So I would like to share with you also in terms of like uh, in Malaysia, because in order to make sure that we are successful in uh, inculcate uh, innovation and uh, entrepreneurship, 
we need a good policy. I think uh, maybe all of you agree that we need uh, a good policy to also like uh, guiding us. So in Malaysia, basically we have what we call a 12 Malaysian uh, planning of IR uh, 4.0. We have the second policy, uh, which is a shared prosperity vision 2030. We have like what we call a, a framing higher education policy. We have also national entrepreneur policy. So all this policy really uh, helping us. And then in Malaysia, we have also uh, what we call a magic Malaysia. So this magic Malaysia uh, basically a place where uh, Malaysian Global Innovation and Creativity Center. So this center uh, basically guiding uh, young kids up to uh, educators to learn what is the current uh, current innovation and then they also offer a uh, certain training because I think as an educator we ourselves we need to uh, get uh, to be trained in terms of the latest innovation. In Malaysia also we have what we call MDEC which is a Malaysian digital economy and then currently we have also what we call a uh, InnoThink. So all these uh, really help us uh, in Malaysia and I think uh, we still need to uh, fully utilize uh, all this uh, all these things in order to make sure that we can uh, working together uh, as an educator, university and then the stakeholder. Because I think in order to be successful uh, to producing a next generation of innopreneur, innovative, because innovation and uh, entrepreneur, so I think we need to have like a good support, not only from uh, our government, but also from other stakeholders. And then I think uh, we also need uh, to have like a uh, training from the outside, from maybe from the uh, country that, uh, you know, like uh, UK or US, because I think they already advanced, uh, because I think uh, their students are also quite advanced. So I, I really hope that I can do something in, uh, in my university, in my class. So I think uh, we can start small and then we can achieve more. So I think uh, tonight I also learned a lot from all the speakers and I hope to, to collaborate with all of you in order to make sure that we can uh, together create a future uh, innopreneur. So with that, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Azura Hanem from Malaysia for sharing those vibrant views. And I really like the methodology of design thinking that you use in your teaching style. Uh, wonderful sharing. Now, instead of going for my round of questions, uh, since we have positive of time, let's directly come to just two questions right now that I see in the chat box from the audience. Uh, one question from Sunatan Ghosh uh, is, how to prevent students from dropping out in this pandemic situation? As all of you are aware, pandemic has caused a lot of issues economically uh, for the families and uh, kids are dropping out from schools. So any of the panel speakers who would like to take up uh, this question, how to prevent students from dropping out in this pandemic situation? Thank you. Can, I, you? can I help? Yes. yes, please. Okay, in our case, there are this a very big problem because most of our students in the private school are transferring in the in the public schools. So I, I only point three. First is uh, more patience in understanding the situations of every families. And then second is um, provide an extra mile, extra effort to understand the things, their problems, and then come up with an innovative skill or material or modes in order for them to continue their studies. And, and lastly is that a school leader must be innovative and creative. And the success of, of our future generation depends on the school leader. Thank you. Wonderful, thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Leo. Uh, let me move on to the second question now here it talks about uh, it is from ifat varsi and the question is how design thinking help in becoming an entrepreneur okay thank you so much for the questions so uh, basically uh, for the design thinking uh, let's say if you come up with a product so of course you need to have the prototype and then you need to test and then uh, similar to be an entrepreneur, you need to have something that you can sell to others. Okay, it is a product or it's service. So we need to make sure that we have something. So in design thinking, we need to not only design, we need 
uh, the prototype and then we need to test. So that's why I think design thinking is really a, a good uh, course that need to be embedded in uh, our uh, class. Thank you. Thank you so much, Azura Hanum, for sharing that. Uh, one last question, which I'll take up, and uh, this is open for all the uh, panelists. And please, just in two sentences, if you can answer. I know it is difficult, but still, if you can try that. The question is, uh, how to effectively incorporate entrepreneurship in class 10th and 12th students? Uh, kindly share your views. It is from Girish Sapra. Hey. Can I answer? Please, please, go ahead. Uh, certainly, we can integrate the concept of entrepreneurship even for the youngest students by accustoming them to higher order thinking skills first. Communication skills, uh, collaborative and uh, emotional learning and true daily activities, including those related to, for example, financial education or how to create a project, a birthday, for, for example, for a student and uh, preparing for it and distributing tasks, for example, is a kind of entrepreneurship, isn't it? Yes, but please give the students the opportunity to express all the ideas, no matter how simple they seem to you, all the achievements of the present were just simple and imaginary ideas in the past. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ms. Hasna. Uh, any, uh, one more panel speaker, would any of you would like to take up this? All right. So- uh, Hello, I, uh, I just need to, oh, just, uh, hello. Yes, yes, Mr. Prabhi. Yeah, so, yeah. So I guess uh, one of the things is very important, right, from the school education, right, provide, um, one of the thing is a career uh, counseling session, like a seminar. Or oh, the other thing is uh, I, believe on entrepreneurs like that, what are the options are there? For example, if it in India, specific the or particular city, what are the entrepreneurship options are there? So the seminar, inviting speakers on that, so that students know that. And then the other thing is the statistics. What is the current statistics, right? What is going on in the market? So the market statistics, those has to be shared with the students. And then, you know, right, it's easier for them to at least uh, uh, go from there. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much, Prabir. Gurin has uh, switched on her video, so that's a warning sign for me that I should close now. And uh, we we had some wonderful panelists today, and uh, it was my uh, honor to be in your company, listening to all your great thoughts. So, all the esteemed panelists, thank you so much for being here with us today. And in my concluding remarks, if you just give me last one minute, please. So we have seen that the kind of uh, landscape is changing with respect to employment and the entire global ecosystem, be it uh, environment or so on. It has become more and more critical that children not only learn what they're learning, but also learn how to learn uh, more advanced technologies, right? So education is moving from less content and more towards how to think critically and solve problems, how to be creative, how to be multidisciplinary, right? So this is how the pedagogy has to be evolved, which will uh, cater to these needs. The curriculum has to include all, not only education, but education on fitness, language, literature, culture, values, right? So education must be able to build the character it enables learners to be ethical, rational, compassionate, caring, while at the same time prepare them for gainful, fulfilling and employment. And let me close with this saying from Nelson Mandela, where he has mentioned, education is the most powerful weapon to, which can be used to change the world. And I think that's what all, of, all the educationists around the world are aiming at. And that's what we gain from all the eminent speakers today. So thank you so much for sharing your vibrant thoughts. And thank you, Gurleen, for allowing us this time to spend in the panel. And uh, over to you. Thank you so much, ma'am, for being the moderator for the, the, today's panel discussion. And thank you all the panelists also for uh, giving us such a great information. And it was really a great session. We uh, All the educators, they were having the great information as I was watching the chat session also. They were, the comment, comments were wonderful. Thank you all. And I would also like to thank Mr. Edward. To, uh, he's side by answering the questions in the chat box uh, while we are having the panel discussion. Thank you so much, sir. And thank you to all the panelists. And thank you to you, ma'am. Thank you, Gurin.
thanks to the entire team of Yuba. Thank you. You're welcome. Next, we would uh, uh, we look forward for the presence of Dr. Sejwa, Senior Lecturer, Ministry of Education, Columbia, Sri Lanka, on a platform and brighten us with your information on topic kids innovation during COVID homestay. Over to you, ma'am. Let me, let me on. Good evening to you all. And I, I think uh, I have changed my topic and I informed uh, to the um, committee. And let me talk about the fostering innovation and entrepreneurship in education to achieve sustainable development goals. As you were introducing me, I belong to the Ministry of Education and having worked with Ministry of Education more than 26 years, I would like to share my experience with you. And uh, here I'm showing you some of my publications that I have been doing so far uh, based on various topics. It's uh, the recent one, it's during the COVID homestay the innovations, the innovations of students irrespective of gender and again online learning in, out, in the outbreak of COVID homestay. Uh, then uh, again e-learning, uh, some of uh, China ethnic migration and their policies and these are some of the papers I did with my Chinese professor when I was doing my PhD. Well, uh, there are some comparative studies. Well, of course, um, uh, this was in 2017. Um, I was a member, key member of the Belt and Road Organization Research Committee. And with the committee, as a committee member, I was able to publish this paper, Triple Jump to the World of Work. Well, uh, there are some others. If I go on reading uh, everything here, it will get more time. But uh, you can, uh, if there are any doubts or any clarification in, for any information, you can uh, question me. Right. Let me start with the topic which aligns with the today's conference, Fostering Innovation and Entrepreneurship in school education to achieve sustainable development goals. Right. To achieve sustainable development goal, one should have a right mindset. From the other speakers, I could get to know that they were talking about a lot of theories. So here I am taking you through a journey which is practical enough to achieve the sustainable development goals within the life in different angles surrounding in the world. Well, what are the global goals for sustainable development? As many of the speakers have already talked about, in 2015, the United Nations Organization talked about, agreed with 17 national goal, global goals for becoming a better world in 2020, 2030, with eradicating poverty, fighting, fighting for inequity, and addressing the urgency of climatic change. Well, it's really essential to understand what is this entrepreneurship and how can we achieve entrepreneurship through innovation, through the sustainability. As many of the speakers have already discussed certain points and the theories, I would skip as time, time is running high. Well, how can we apply this entrepreneurship in the field of education is my target today. Right? How is entrepreneurship? anchored in the field of education. 
how may the learning processes be understood and handled according to an entrepreneurial approach? Can innovation and entrepreneurship be taught? As Sina was describing, how to teach sustainability in an English classroom is an old age debate. The answer is both yes and no. Education plays an essential role in shaping attitudes, skills, and culture from the primary levels up. We need to address from the grassroots level. As we all aware that industry drivers innovation and learning, and it helps to create the new technological knowledge, which is vital for job creation, sustainable livelihood, and equitable growth. And it is the key of eradicating poverty because we are targeting for an economic-based society, economically powerful society through education as educationist. With this, I would like to come to the, my objectives. It's just to share the experience and our thoughts, feelings as an intellectuals here in the forum. And I would like to bring out a new concept which I have grabbed from Thailand that we call it Sufficiency Economy Philosophy, SEP, and how we are going to incorporate SEP into our curriculum to reach sustainable development goals. Thus, I do believe that we need to share experience, share goals as experienced practitioners on how to divide sustainability actions and activities, in, especially in schools. School children are the lifeblood of the nation. So our existing knowledge of how entrepreneurial activities may contribute to the STD remains, sometimes it may be limited. There can be experts who are veteran in this field. So with this mindset, as I started, with my talk, to achieve the sustainable development goal, we need to have a set mind. To have a set mind or mindset, sufficiency for sustainability is essential. Knowledge plus virtues in making decision and moderation, reasonableness, and we need to be prudent in making decisions, especially in management. For economy, perhaps for society, and for environment or culture. The outcomes of these little things should you, reflect balanced progress. Excuse me, ma'am. Hello? Uh, sorry to interrupt you. Actually, your slide is not working. It's ticked on only on the first page. Huh? Is it not moving? Yes, ma'am, it's not moving. Now? Not now also. Wait for a second. Shall I say, share it once again? Yes, ma'am. What's wrong with this? Mm, I don't know. I was here somewhere. I had nice, my uh, goodness, I was so, now, uh, how, how do you see it? Do you see my presentation? Yes, ma'am. I was talking about my publications, then these are some of my publications, as I told you, and this is the topic that I am going to target for today. And I was talking about the right mindset to achieve goals. I talked about this, where the how to achieve entrepreneurship in the field of education. And it's an old debate still. Let us see. So this is the point where I was talking 
currently and it is the sufficiency for sustainability. In achieving this, we need the knowledge plus the virtues. It's more important in making decisions as well as moderation, reasonable, prudent. We need to be prudent enough, especially in making decisions related to management for economy, for society, for environment and culture. Well, People highly talk about innovation and it has become a buzzword today. Well, since uh, all the speakers talk about, let me take you a tour to Thailand. It's a remote, agricultural, low-income village in Thailand, close to Cambodia, and where they practice this sustainable, sustainable, economy philosophy for achieving sustainable development goals. So they have different projects, clean and green project, where the children get first-hand authentic experience in their learning. They are, they are thinking out of the box. They are in their natural environment getting first-hand experience. It's really interesting to notice that kids are mostly uh, an hour because they usually the kids stay eight to nine hours in the school, one hour totally in the field, in the learning center. You will see that they have forest and hub is another project that is to protect the environment, which is one of the sustainable development goals and they they understand they name the trees and they know the value of trees then the recycling everything they learn under one topic it's an umbrella term well the recycling from the childhood the kids do recycling and they are doing it as their own projects through they from the projects they learn new things, they apply new concepts, and they learn through errors. And also, they have bio extract project. Through these projects, especially the mushroom cultivation, is one of the projects where they become entrepreneurs in the school level. Small kids from the primary level to secondary level and tertiary levels, they have different projects. Uh, from the mushroom projects, they know how they, how well they cultivate them, the temperature they need, the fertilizer, or what is, whatever the um, uh, ingredients or anything for cultivation. Then they, uh, the products. Then they know how to store them. Uh, well, how they prepare these products to the market. They know everything. From the childhood and they are student entrepreneurs in the school and vegetable and edible fans. It's an interesting project where the students work in the field, they do grind things, they, they are the ones who they like, they do like uh, farmers, they work in the field, uh, you see they do the cooking in the, uh, they, what they grow in the field, they use for their lunch because the school provides the lunch itself. <clears throat> so it's really interesting to learn how the kids uh, do learning. It's learning by doing, right? And they, how they become entrepreneurs from the small level, especially from the chicken raising. They know what food should be given, what medicine should be given, and the life cycle of a chicken and the chicken products, uh, then the preservation kind of things from the childhood with the experience that they gain from the learning centers with the teacher. They learn everything under a curriculum and the teacher has a lesson plan for the practical session too. They are evaluated based on their performance. Fish racing, look at 
at the end they become entrepreneurs they they choose their livelihood from the beginning fish raising they they learn the morphological structures of the tilapia then the breeding system the life cycle then how to do the harvesting sent to the market everything under the sun is learned through learning by doing how authentic experience are gained at the small age is really interesting well another project that they do is charcoal they produce the charcoal in the learning center and they sell this charcoal to the community they are they earn this money earned is spent for their lunch they they they, they learn themselves and they provide they they are not employees at the latter part of their age they become entrepreneurs by giving some jobs to the people around and bio product processing look here they they co cooperatively work together to make the project successful they enjoy their learning experience well children do learn from the kindergarten they start the first project in recycling the things so what do they do why do they do this is scp scp sufficiency economy theory they become entrepreneurs at last so as educators we need to be strategic in project in promoting project based learning in is teaching strategy where students learn by actively engaging real world and personally meaningful projects you i do hope that you were able to see that all these projects were meaningful projects also they learn through inquiries inquiry learning is a student centered approach as the previous speakers they were talking about highly about the school student centered approach to achieve sustainable development especially in the 21st century we need our classrooms to be learner centered so this sustainable eco economy policy it we it leads to a sustainability so through this scp concept thailand is trying to reach the sdg goals for achieving the 2030 national development goals sdg goals right then they are the pillars there are goals the goals were said to be based on the three pillars and also balance environment namely these are the three pillars economy society and environment so how do we do this the pedagogical methods we need to promote to achieve them open learning where the children do the learning outcomes they achieve the learning outcomes at the end of the project finally active learning they do cooperatively they work together they share experiences they communicate and learning experience beyond the classroom yes they are just not sitting in the classroom they are out of the classroom getting the authentic learning experiences so the learning atmosphere is different and they you need to in, uh, promote and foster collaboration and teamwork encouraging for them to have new ideas to develop their creativity and also to develop emotional intelligence tolerance flexibility like those are the qualities that we expect from a 21st century student and also their thinking strategies perhaps critical thinking logical thinking and problem solving thinking should be developed so from this thoughts sharing from 
these thoughts, what are again from the uh, course I have been following these days in Thailand, I would like to suggest you that we as intellectuals, educationists, we need to practice what can be practiced actually in the society out of the classroom. Thank you so much for being patiently listening to me. You are very welcome. Uh, and it's high time for you to raise questions if you have anything to be raised of clarification. Thank you so much, ma'am, for sharing your knowledge with us. I request the educators, if they are having any question or any query, they can raise their hand or they can pop their message in the chat box. Ma'am, the session was really informative. Your information speaks about your experience and it really means a lot to us as the educators or educators were messaging in the chat box that they came to learn about the new things. And really, if they are getting the new things, that means they are going to implement in, uh, that things in their life. Thank you so much, ma'am, for being with us. You all are welcome. With this, I would like to thank all the speakers for enlightening us and attendees for making the conference successful. This was a two-day conference on foresting innovation and entrepreneurship in school education to achieve sustainable development goals. Yesterday and today, we had a brilliant outstanding speakers. They shared their knowledge, personal experience, and learning, point, learning points with us, and by which we all gained a lot, and it's going to help us in the future by implementing it in the real form. Our next prayer... Uh, because of some technical issue, a uh, weather uh, problem, our uh, next speaker uh, is not able to join us today. So with this, uh, we are ending up our session. The feedback form will be mailed to all the uh, educators on, in, on their email IDs within one to two hours. So they can fill the feedback form and they will receive the certificates. If you are having any query or any question, you are free to ask. There was one query by Mr. Barbai. Um, hello, everyone. Yes, uh, I'm, I'm very I'm from Assam, um, India. Actually, I want to know from all the educators, uh, means a new process is there uh, that we come to know and we have to think all the things in a new way that we know. But in this situation of pandemic, how they are taking their examination and how, means how they are uh, promoting their children or means how they manage to uh, manage this education nowadays. If someone tell the situation of uh, the other country, I think it will be a little bit helpful for us also. Just briefly tell you, uh, there are a number of softwares or the uh, learning management um, uh, softwares have been used actually for uh, evaluation monitoring. We have been researching, I have been researching for quite a while. Uh, they are actually is very challenging actually for uh, educators for uh, monitoring and evaluation. So I think there are research has been going on. There are new uh, programs is coming, but it is challenging for sure. And I guess uh, from uh, our perspective, we are using uh, different, uh, uh, you know, uh, survey or the feedbacks from the students also, uh, especially right as an educator, we also write email or chat, we communicate with the students so we get feedback. Uh, for examinations, particularly for those uh, modules and everything, we use, uh, I think, a software or the learning management system, so thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you so much. We are having next question by Amar, sir. First of all, good evening to all. And uh, this is Ajad Amar. 
actually i am a educator of social science basically so my humble um, request to the educators or the eminent speakers that my question is that how to inculcate or how to motivate their students at the secondary level that is from 9 to 12 level students that to become an entrepreneur or to think about the out of the box since we are right now providing only the uh, basic educations or you can say that the traditional educations we are not actually providing inculcating the entrepreneurship skills despite of we are uh, pretending that we are providing the educational skills and the skill based education and experiential learning but we are actually on grassroots level still we are not providing the same so i think that how to inculcate or how to take attempt over that particular so that 21st century generations and the this uh, Year students are actually trying to become job provider rather than job seeker. So my question is with uh, Mondel Sir, Dr. Leo, and the, all the panelists who are in the discussion. So I think that I am clear with my questions. Okay, so uh, am I audible? Yeah, sure, sure. Okay, so in the Philippines we have our one of the subjects. Technology and livelihood education, and there are uh, different uh, specializations or focus. It depends on the school leader and what to adapt. Like for example, in my case, we adapt for grade ten uh, baking and pastry. So we, in that case, we train already our students how to how to do the marketing and then the the, the listing all the price and then do the costing in that particular simple way. They will, they were able to. To, mat, to do small business and now they are applying during their vacation for two months before mm -hmm. the opening of the school year uh, some of them were able to to apply what they learned so in that okay. simple manner also we we invite uh, bread factory like for example in the philippines we have gardenia uh, they mm -hmm. also provide trainings that free training uh, virtual tour in their company and then they provide also some materials for our students even in the preschool so they, they also provide uh, simple uh, recipes or ingredients in order for, for the students to come up. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Leo, You're for welcome. the wonderful answer you have given. I will try to communicate with my chairman and the principal, sir, to have such type of educational tour and industry tour as well. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Thank you so much, sir. Are we having any other questions uh, from the educator side? If yes, please raise your hand or uh, put it on a chat box. Joseph has raised his hand. I request the IT team to please unmute the Joseph. Hello, am I audible? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, yeah, it's not a question really, but you know, I was, um, yeah, going through yesterday and today. I just wanted to thank the whole moderators and of course our eminent speakers. I have been able to learn so much. This is just a thank you note, basically. Uh, loads of knowledge. I don't know how much I can retain and recall when I decimate to, to disseminate the same to my school back home. And uh, yet, yeah, that has been a very, very rich uh, learning. Thank you, uh, Team Kite, for organizing such a great event. Uh, hope to be part of you in future too. We have a, a team already on WhatsApp, 39 students with me. And uh, previous to this also, we were thinking on these lines. Because I teach uh, history and uh, political science. History classes are not always very interesting. So we add, uh, keep adding, you know, value education and uh, individual child care into these things. And uh, what we can do. But this uh, conference especially has added a lot of value to our ongoing work. Thank you very much, all of you. Thank you, Mr. Joseph. It means a lot for the KITE organization and for the speakers. 
if anybody else who want to have words with the speaker thank you so much to all the speakers and the panelists mr sonatan he has raised his hand uh, hello everybody thank you for giving me the opportunities for asking this question uh, i did not get the chance to ask this question so i am asking this question now sir so give me chance to ask this question okay. my question is how can emotional intelligence be improved am i audible sir yes sir you are audible am i clear in my question can you repeat the question again i didn't hear you properly sorry yes, yes sir i am repeating how can emotional intelligence be improved so i guess the emotional intelligence uh, the practice is um, there are many techniques that you mindfulness as i say shared with you those five you know areas so you need to have those self uh, uh, self awareness um, uh, which is very important the first step actually so uh, when you have the self awareness uh, then you know right where you are at i always ask a one question always right you should know right as a person right where you are at right now and where you want to be and how you want to achieve that one so when you ask the question uh, then you know right how you can get it. then as a you know right um, you and you can get resources you can ask others you can get mentors you can get coaches so this is very important right so and there are a lot of online resources are there uh, but i guess uh, emotional intelligence can be improved by practicing right yes. practicing thank those you. things thank you thank you sir for giving me the answer and thank you every uh, panelist all the speakers and also i would like to thank the team of guys for giving this opportunities for learning and gathering knowledge thank you everybody thank you very much thank you so much sir i have a one question from all the panelists uh, it's not like a question it's just uh, like a, a, a information from your side like nowadays due to a pandemic time period we all are going on a online mode even though exams are taken on the online mode and it's a really a huge problem nowadays because online exam is really a difficult part so uh give us some suggestions or tools that how can we can uh, successfully have the online exams or what things we can do it with it okay so i i i think this based on my experience we just had our orientation meeting with the parents of my my youngest daughter uh, who is in grade 12 now and uh, that's the issue now because they are looking into an application which uh during examination will prohibit the children or the, the students to look for websites so it, it it means all the websites will be disabled during examination so that they cannot look into the do, do a research or while answering and at the same time also maybe uh, cut and paste so that they are using lockdown i i i that, that's a software but the problem now is they are going to there's an issue about technicalities in terms of the device because you need when you apply when you download the, the application you are required to disable the the firewall so it means your your device is not anymore protected so so far that's our concern but most of the schools because i am also um, facilitating private schools because most of the private schools in the philippines are utilizing online learning online distance learning so most of us are just focused on the ordinary learning management system but so far not much with how to prevent cheating or, or those in terms of examination because these are our challenges <laughs> okay thank you i guess can i have a minute just yeah. uh, share my experience yeah. i guess one of the thing challenging right now is that because of those things i think i have seen more open-ended or open question when you are actually designed the questions or anything one of the surveys or the questions come how it can be improved right we need to have some kind of a feedback 
and interactions. And also keep in mind when we are actually for a particular group of students, it can be designed uh, specifically, for example, learning disabilities or someone who is having challenges. So there are a number of set of questions uh, that can be designed. So it is very important that it has to be interactive. This question has to be um, specifically designed or customized to the students so that we can get a feedback. Uh, I have seen right here in North America, not like we are not worried about things, sometimes open book exam, but open book exam also very uh, challenging, like a case studies or you know some other things where you know right you have more creativity or more innovations, more practical approaches are there. So I guess it is, I have seen here, mostly in North America is actually mostly the application based questions are there. So it doesn't matter whether you are serve web browsing and everything, you don't even have a time to do that because uh, the type of questions that you are answering. So it is very important just to uh, design. It's just not typical questions uh, that you are asked designing every time. So it's very important to uh, redesign the questions or things. Um, yeah. Thank you so much, sir. Now I would like to ask again if anybody is having any question or any query, because the session is really informative and it really means a lot. It seems like uh, Girish, he is he or she is having a question. And he he or she has raised his hand. Hello. Yes, sir. Uh, first of all, I would like to congratulate Kites uh, for organizing such a wonderful event. And I'm very thankful to the eminent speakers who have given share their views. Uh, sir, my question is uh, basically, uh, as you have answered, try to answer. My question was, uh, as you said, uh, we should do what we love or love what to what we do. Can you please elaborate? I mean, <laughs> this question was asked to me by my MTech student, uh, but I was not very clear at that time. Although I have answered that you should do what you love. <laughs> so I just want to have your uh, views about this. Okay, maybe I, I want to share. Uh, yeah, I've read this question. Uh, thanks a lot for uh, my question. What is correct love? What you do or do what you love? So uh, the same as teaching, you cannot, you cannot give what you do not have. You cannot teach what if, if you don't, you don't, you are not equipped. So the same thing. We have the so-called multiple intelligences. So we focus on the the strengths of the skills and the abilities of our students focus on that in order because we cannot apply one strategy to all students so that's why we have the differentiated instructions so that's my take for this particular question so support to support yeah you'll support as a parent and at the same time as an educator we have to support the abilities of our students thank you yes. i would like to share one thing right this why ask why actually if you don't enjoy ask questions about to yourself ask why why questions so i am learning this one uh, if you ask why questions why you are doing that one why you are passionate about love if you are loving you know right or if you do right if you love what you do i guess uh, is very important so ask why question to yourself that what do you love to do right so and then you will find answers it is very introspection right introspective you know right question so it's very important to ask this question to you Self. Uh, yes, sir. This question is mainly uh, from the students who are uh, switching to uh, their career after 10th or 12th, deciding the fields of engineering or uh, whatever they are going to do in future. So that question is really difficult at that point. But as you have mentioned that uh, we should ask why, uh, I think the key to answer is uh, this much. The right thing about uh, you have said the answer is how, uh, why and how. <laughs> uh, so thank you, sir, uh, for sharing your views. Thanks a lot. Now, I would like to thank all our speakers again 
for such a great information as we have gained a lot i would like to thank the educators also for attending the webinar and making it successful and clearing their queries and doubts in the field of education with respect to entrepreneurship with this we would like to end the conference a two day conference on topic posting innovation and entrepreneurship in school education to achieve sustainable development goal by the team kites Thank you all.